Huddle, huddle, huddle. Save, save, save. Build a, build a, build a. Sound money. Are we on? Why are we looking at Juan's ugly face? <laughs> huh? I thought we were the stars of the show. <laughs> How do you do that? All right. There we are. Okay. You're All right. This is a session open to the public by high demand. Uh, these everybody they kind of pulled me out of my my <laughs> my bunker. I said, "Oh, I got to talk about GMC and all, and what's going on in the market." I did barely know about it. I saw it, and I just dismissed it. I guess Tone just had a big show on it and everything. But um, so I thought I would address it. I'm going to just hopefully bring some sanity to the situation, guys. I'm going to take everybody right back to the fundamentals, and the fundamentals have not changed. Uh, the three I what I teach is is uh, I learned from my my number one mentor in economics was uh, uh, E.C. Harwood, and he taught me about the gold standard and what a gold standard really is, which for some reason uh, is not understood by this generation, and it should be, because you know so much about, about economics and so much about, about Austrian economics, but somehow uh, that whole uh, golden era has been missed, and that there was an innovation back there at the turn of the 19th century that was comparable to the Bitcoin uh, innovation. But that's not what's going on now. <clears throat> uh, what we're seeing now is just a ref reflection of inflation that we've had uh, for four generations. It started out with, in uh, once they nationalized the gold standard and the, they formed, uh, uh, they uh, created the Federal Reserve System. They also instituted a, a tax on labor, which labor should never be taxed, guys. That's a, a form of slavery. Uh, but they pulled that one off. Uh, and, of course, it was shortly after we had the Federal Reserve that we had World War I. And, you know, Mike, then later on in the 30s, they, of course, uh, FDR seized all the gold. And then my grandparents, and bless their hearts, they were wonderful, two wonderful examples in life for me. Uh, but uh, that generation voted in Social Security. Uh, and my mentor, it's, uh, there's the three greatest swindles of all time are number one, inflation. You, nothing beats that. It's the biggest inflation, biggest swindle that's ever been out there. Number two <clears throat> is Social Security. And, you know, if you're young guys, uh, you're paying that Social Security and you're not going to collect or it's going to be, you're going to pay in a lot more. It's, it's a tax. It's, you're, not, you're not taking care of anybody. Uh, in fact, it's very amoral because we, we throw all of the charity onto the state and we really avoid personal responsibility. The third greatest swindle is the SEC. Actually, you can change that uh, because that's what, what was the three-letter institution that uh, came down on on uh, Colonel Harwood, and so naturally that's who he, he targeted. But it can be any three-letter uh, or four-letter. It could be the CFTC. Uh, it can be the DEA. It can be <laughs> the FBI. <clears throat> now, when I was locked up for eleven years, I found out. You know, I just hate hearing these conservatives like Sean Hannity. Oh, it's just a few people at the top that are corrupt. <laughs> the FBI is corrupt through and through. Okay, prove show me I'm wrong. I, I did. I looked at hundreds of cases uh, while I was in prison and drug cases, and the the money and the drugs never matched. And you know, maybe the honest agents, the DEA or FBI or whatever or uh, ATF, maybe they only took the money and not the drugs, but they never matched, and they were always short. And it's a perfect game because if you're under indictment and they say, well, if you, what, you took my money, you, I had more money than that, then your sentence increases. So yes, yeah, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> it was terrible. And they never matched. And that, there's no reason for these guys to lie to me. And they're not, people I've talked to since I've gotten out, finally one person where the money and the drugs matched. It, it, does, it just never happened. So basically the United States government is the biggest drug dealer in the world. <laughs> and now that we're making probably the best drugs in the world, we'll probably be exporters and be forcing Mexico <laughs> to buy our little, uh, uh, the good stuff in the pipes that, they, that they're making in California now. So guys, if you want change, 
you're going to have to address these fundamentals. It's, I mean, this is nothing new. Uh, the, uh, yeah, what part of corruption don't you understand in regulation? Uh, free markets have to be unregulated markets. And the reason that Bitcoin is so, so valuable is because it is so heavily regulated. So I, you know, I'm take I take the position that that you got you we've got a big job ahead of us, and this is a wake up call for all the youngsters. Yeah. Oh, surprise, surprise! They shut down the exchange for you. <laughs> well, they did the same things for the hunts. Uh, right. Well, uh, maybe we should go over what the situation is first. Of all, all right, Dan. So I like me the situation. How is this different from anything else except we got a bunch of young uh, younger people involved? And it's a new generation. Well, what we're seeing in in theory, at least, is this group called Wall Street Bets on Reddit, which has amassed somewhere upwards of four, yeah, if we'll just say a screen here. It's amassed up around uh, 4 million people following now. Mm -hmm. um, and they have apparently, oh, let's just get this away. Yeah. So they have apparently banded together and found and targeted these stocks that were shorted above the actual you know that were they were naked shorted okay um gme being one of them apparently that's been shorted to an interest of 140 percent mm -hmm. and amc is another one and all these small little retail investors decided that they were going to band together and show all these naked short sellers exactly what people could do and started just throwing money for no reason into GameStop and AMC. Well, no other reason than the fact mm -hmm. that they were naked shorted. And that has pushed GME, which is a stock that was going for around, what, $10, $12 a couple of days ago, or weeks ago. To well, yeah, and go out to the long, go do your weekly chart, because you, you, you do have, you guys, if you go by what I teach. I, I'm an old Ted Warren guy. Is that the weekly chart? That's the weekly chart. Okay. So you can go back and put it, put it in the monthly or weekly guys, what you're looking for always, uh, you, you want to buy quiet markets. And so that's what you saw that you see that little <laughs> sideways and nothing for, for what <laughs> years there. And then you had the break. Okay. So, all right. So now we're in, this is, you had your accumulation phase down there. Somebody was really accumulating down there between <laughs> five and, and two fifty. I mean, can you see it? Yeah. <laughs> That's accumulation. Now you're in the distribution. Okay. Now the problem that you have right now is how much of the buying is speculation and how much, uh, are tr people that truly have bought the stock and they're buying it like Bitcoin. But you can get, if, as long as you are buying and you're hodling and you had the stock, you might be okay. Except the difference is Bitcoin is your Bitcoin as long as you have the keys. Do you have your stock? No, that's the point. You, yeah. can't, you can't have a take, take delivery of it. Yeah, stock. so what happened to our stock? We used to be able to take delivery of stock certificates. Do you, uh, how many of you out there that have bought this stuff actually have stock certificates? Or I kind of understand they've kind of done away with all that now. It's just one big uh, uh, casino, and, and, and the brokerage firms and, and the government are your part, they're the house. And so this is a political basically, play more than basically. So what so what we're saying is that the people of Wall Street bets, the small retail investors, have found a way to screw over the house. Right. And now the house is fighting back, which is they changed the rules. It's exactly as Tone says, play dumb games. Oh, win, you, you mean know. you didn't know that was coming? <laughs> play stupid games, win stupid <laughs> prizes. But I also agree with Bitcoin motorists who we have on, um, when he says that. This is exposing the system. But yeah, I, yeah the exactly. I like corruption it. Corruption it is. Right, exactly. And you've had other situations. Now, and that also exposes, this oh, is why thanks, you're never going to have, in my opinion, a deliverable Bitcoin futures because big, Bitcoin can actually be cornered. And you can, you know, if you, you can buy the futures and nobody knows about it. Uh, this is why I'm, I'm, I want to kind of go to Michael Saylor's convention. I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to need to see if I can get in there and sign up for it because I don't know what he's really pr proposing here. You've got to have your keys to have the Bitcoin. If if you're on GPTC or you got the, the back at certificate, that's not Bitcoin. You're, you're really, you're, you've given up your unconfiscatability. We were talking about that. What is that? Unconfiscatable, uh, 
uh, censorship resistance. Censorship, you've given up your censorship resistance, and you've also given up your transferability to a degree, not as much, but the first two, well, you you've really have at You've up. at least opened up for the possibility of someone right. taking the transferability away. And so this is uh, what's so unique. So yeah, I mean, if you own the stock, if you have this physical certificate, but I think they've done away with that a long time ago. Again, I, I so. used to be a registered securities broker, but I've been out of it for, you know, for for 40 years, oh, yeah, 40, 30 years, a long time. So I know things have changed, but the markets don't change. They, they're, it's still out there. So we had another situation in uh, the potato market. They used to have a main potato contract. And uh, this is one of the problems that you have with delivery. It, it, uh, Usually there's kind of a, a variance, like in silver, when you took delivery, you, there was, you had to exchange and they traded the silver futures, but there was an actual physical market that you, the futures were settled on. You could take delivery. What happened, because I did it all the time with gold and silver and even platinum. You would take delivery, you would get a certificate uh, when it would be at any number of, of depositories. It could be, um, the biggest one is Iron Mountain Depository because it was independent, was not affiliated with any bank. Chase had, something there all the big big city bank stored it and then you you they had approved carriers so if you wanted and uh, approve vault so and so you would if i took delivery i could contract a brink's truck to go or another proof there's several approved carriers go pick up my gold and then deliver it to where i want to have it you know and use it for whatever i want the hunts actually did this they took delivery of uh, Comex Silver, and they hired two jetliners and filled it full of silver and, and flew it to Switzerland. <laughs> uh, but there, you know, silver has a, a variable stock and flow, a much more variable than gold. Gold is a, a lesser one, but they found a, when, when the, the, the hunts literally did corner the market. <clears throat> but what happened, they didn't recognize that there was another silver mine sitting on people's fireplace mantles. And there were literally lines in January of 1980, January, February, and March, people lined up selling their silver to the, the, the smelters. And of course, it was just a matter of time where it took, it takes about six to eight weeks to take that silver, melt it, and get it deliverable on the exchange. So you did temporarily uh, cut back uh, on, you, you had to be a legitimate hedger. Basically, you, they wouldn't, the speculation they cut out. And which was really probably a wise thing for a lot of players because people that were still had major positions on when it broke, it broke hard and fast and, and you couldn't get out. So uh, 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 they did put restrictions on trading. In potatoes, it was a different thing because you had a main contract, but the big player was Simplot and all his farms were in Idaho. So he could only deliver Idaho potatoes. And so he did, he wound up going into default and the people, and I had a customer never traded commodities again because he was in on it. He, and he said, I want delivery. And you know, they wouldn't give him delivery. So instead they settled, he made a, a profit, but not near, you know, what he should have gotten. Basically Simplot should have gone belly up. They, if it was you or me that had taken everything they had, but because of who the player was uh, and Simplot basically was the uh, uh, supplier of French fries to McDonald's. That's how big he is. Right. So um, uh, that's, I mean, don't be surprised if they pull the plug on you. And if you have the actual sign, that's why you want the actual Bitcoin. The right now in, in Bitcoin, as long as your dollar cost averaging, hey guys, I missed out on the move from 20,000 to 40,000. As you know, I'm not trading uh, actively, hardly at all, uh, because the market dynamics has changed. We've kicked in on it's 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 a different ball game from what it was. This year is going to be different from last year. It just is. And so I'm being real careful and uh, uh, I'm, I'm not excited. I don't want to get caught up in this excitement. So, okay, but guys, explain to me what's going on and maybe I can help you a little bit. But that's my my fundamental thing. Is this is a wake up call. This is great for people to see. And you're going to find out that, you know, regulation doesn't help us. You know, the, the little bucket shop that was using Bitcoin for trading, they shut him down. Look who's shut down 
The only exchange that's shut down is the, they're all out on the lam, running from the, the guys with to have the, the DEA and the, 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 the DOJ and they, you oh, know, the, all, all, all these guys with the guns and they're out right. And they're smart enough. These guys are my heroes because they, they outplayed them right now. They are outplaying them and they need our support. They don't need your Bitcoin, but we need to get behind Samuel Reed and Arthur Hayes and the other two guys that are named on that indictment. You understand why now it's so important that we get behind these guys. These guys are, are bigger heroes to me than Julian Assange uh, or uh, uh, Michael Snowden or Snowden, Edward Snowden. Snowden. Edward Snowden yeah, because Snowden is simply was exposed uh, the corrupt uh, corruption of surveillance and and uh, Assange the corruption of of, of, of how we of war. And, but this is how our pro private property is seized. And you know what? If the government could shut down BitMEX, it would be shut down. It would have that FBI signal on it saying you can't do it. But instead, what did they do? You told me, I didn't realize they did it. When they shut it down, so they, they actually... As, as soon as there was speculation of anything... Going wrong. Like the going wrong with, they, with BitMEX. They, BitMEX put in two extra withdrawals in a 24 hour. Yes. So period. they say, you know what? Run us. Exactly. Like, try to see. We've got yeah. everything covered. We've got right? everything covered, guys. You know what? We got some guys on the lam that everybody's just ignoring, and I'm not ignoring them. You know, Sam, I hope this is a wake up call. I really, really do. So, okay, good. I guess you guys had, you, said you had a pretty good conversation with Tone today, uh, Bitcoin Motors. What? Tell, tell us what's going on. What is the general consensus of what's going on here? And I'll just throw in my two cents worth. Definitely. Yeah, sure. So um, I think, see, I was never, ever interested in um, in penny stock pump and dumps. I thought they were stupid. The only reason I this piqued my interest it felt like a movement. And I went on the subreddit, Wall Street Bets, and I was reading through the posts. And these guys are all saying, hold, hold, hold. But then, you know, again, <laughs> Pump and dump schemes also say that they always want you to hold because they want to sell. But I feel like there's something very, very interesting going on. They're exposing pump and dump schemes don't expose uh, manipulation, not manipulation. I guess that's the wrong word, but they don't expose how the game is fixed against them. These guys, are, it's, it's, it's about making money. And anyone who tells you it's not is lying, but it's also about making a point. And that's what interests me about this movie. That's why I find this so fascinating I, I'm just sitting here watching this and I'm just uh, smiling and laughing, just like when they stormed the Capitol. Even though I wasn't one of those people that was stormed the Capitol, I was sitting back and smiling and laughing about it because I'm like, all these people are freaking out. They're like, oh my God, they, you know, when you're exposing how vulnerable the system is and how every, the emperor has no clothes, I love stuff like that. That's that's my take on it. Uh, Tone is saying, don't, don't, you know, don't screw with this. And he's right. The uh, people who go all in on that are, they're, they're morons and they deserve to get wrecked. But I don't see anything wrong with with uh, cheering them on or or throwing a couple thousand fiat. I mean, I didn't sell any BTC. No, 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 no. I agree with. You. I think it's I, great. I, I, I think it's yeah. really. I think it, the, the, whoever's doing it is exposing. I I just hope everybody learns from this because what of course they're going to have they're going to call for more regulation and what we, this needs to be called for. Let's abolish the SEC. You know, let's get uh, you know let's free up these poor guys. You know that they're, they're the the the, the the three letter US government agencies are chasing them all around, you know, the, the world trying to arrest them. And how many of you Americans were trading there? You were the ones that created the deception. You had to lie and tell them you weren't an American citizen to trade there, you know, and, and, but now you're all quiet when they're taking the heat, you know, I, you know, sorry, it's a hip hop. The hypocrisy is beyond my understanding guys. It just really is. I mean, there are definitely some systemic problems that, that are being exposed as a consequence of this situation. So, no, I, I love it that, that this is going on. I think it's great. And uh, all the more now, just don't expect it. You know, you're going to win anything from this because I it's sad. Yeah, I have a fairly interactive brokers, all the big they're shutting down. You can't. Well, even it's already it. done, right? Like like this. Yeah, this pump is already done. I think, and it, it acted very similar to the way that the altcoins and the ICOs it play. Is. It's like, you know, and it looks like first the it's slow top. accumulation, then massive run up. And when it's up, 
when it's up, you know, 300%, then it, then you start catching up and try to talk about it. At that point, you have to sell. Like, just for, and I tweeted this out from experience. Like, you don't really want to get in at this point. Like, the moment <laughs> that, it, that it's hitting the mainstream news is when it's too, when late, it's too late, usually, yeah. right? Um, now I understand the, the, I understand the anger that's going, that's in it. And I understand they've sort of fucked the, the wall street and the, the big players and the casino and, you know, like the, the kind of populism that's, you know, they're not going to get rid of, they think they can get rid of populism by getting rid of Trump. Good luck, man. Populism <laughs> is, is, is everywhere in the United States now. Uh, the frog knows that it's being boiled and it's jumped out of the pot. And now you got to chase the frog around the kitchen and that's what's happening now. <laughs> um, so, but, but I, but I think it's also like, this is not just activism. This is, this is also like a sophisticated enough uh, speculative play. Like they were trying to short squeeze oh, the hedge no, funds I knowing it, that, it, it, that the they would have to be it, called it was, on their shorts, it, which would push the price up. Right. It's brilliant. It's absolutely it's it's a uh, it's the best way to actually scoop, you know. Get, yeah, get my, my question is how many? Guys, I mean, I don't I don't trade on Robinhood because I know it's for kind of for you know I'm not and I'm not really interested in it or anything. Their commissions are high. It's a retail kind of a store, but I don't you know you you don't if you're buying any of this shit on these platforms, you don't really own the stock. Wake up! You don't <laughs> own it. <laughs> if you do. You know, if you have those stocks, I mean, what is the play here? Now, who are the big stockholders in that? I'm sure they're founders of the company. I haven't done any research on the company, but there's some people that are really benefiting and all power to them. That's great. And the people that sorted that shit, yeah, they should have their little uh, panties uh, browned up, <laughs> you know. And the problem is they, they and, don't. And they ought to, yeah, and the problem is, yeah, they don't. That That's the problem. And that the regulators are not ever going to help you as consumers. They're going to okay. help. The They're going to help the exchange. They're going to help the guys that have the money that are the lobbyists. So, you know, it's guys. Uh, Ludwig I've von had... Mises, they asked. I think it was Ludwig von Mises, they asked, well, if you became president, what would you do? And he said, well, the first thing I'd do is everything I had control of, my presidential office and everything, I would cut everything in half, the budget in half. And I'd go to Congress, say, you got to cut everything in half. That'd be the first year. And then the second year, what do you do the second? Well, I do the second, the same thing the second year and the same thing a third year. Then the fourth year, now we can start looking at it, maybe some change in, or new regulations. <laughs> new legislation of some kind but that's what's going to have to change it just has to be a fundamental change in thinking and bitcoin's making that happen to some of us and it's not going to happen to the masses it's going to happen to some of us and it's going to happen to the wealth producers first and so i do think you know my i've always said that the next big wave in bitcoin is not going to be banking the unbanked it's going to be the the have not entrepreneurs that are they're wealth producing people all around the world. Uh, and they're gonna recognize, hey, this money system doesn't work. And so they're gonna be putting themselves on the Bitcoin standard. And so we, and if, if we're gonna be, if we are our own banks, we need to start acting like bankers. And basically that means uh, you're a, a bank to those around you. I think, I think living your life uh, separately in different localities, the, the biggest, uh, you know, Juan's in Colombia right now. Juan, I encourage you, stay in Colombia. You know, why do you, why, you know, if you, I mean, I know you kind of want to renew your green card and hopefully you can do it from afar. But, but I, you know, I'm trying to, to arrange my affairs so I never have to go back to the United States. And I also am hoping to, to maybe get a, a little vacation place down there in, in Mendy Inn or somewhere in Colombia. Colombia is a beautiful country. And it's a little far. Yeah, but here's the problem with Colombia. Now. We're under straight martial law right now. Really? Wow. We're, so... we're under straight martial law. Like, there's like, I can, I can exit my house one, like three out of five days, three out of seven days of the week, three or four of the day. You know, like, I have a social, like, the special ID number. If that if the, if the, if the ends with a pair, then I can go out in pair days. And if not, then I can't, right? You can't do that shit in the United States in most places. That's unconstitutional. But but here in Colombia, it looks like it's like a straight chain of command from the president to the mayors. Uh, I don't know. I haven't read the constitution yet. I'm going to have to. But 
uh, you know, the, the freedom that that is enjoyed by the United States, you know, they have no idea what they have. And they're they're you know, they, they, maybe they're waking up to to the tyranny that's uh, falling upon them. But uh, yeah, I mean, in Colombia, like I don't even people are still asleep, like the frogs boiling and they don't even know what's going on. The same goes for Canada. Um, so and the, and the I UK, mean, that's the reason I've, it's tricky, I've you know, like where, where do you make a final stand? Do you run away? Do you just sort of keep running away from country to country until they catch you or until the tyranny reaches you? Right. I think Mexico is a great place to be because, oh, yeah. because it's a failed state. So there's a lot of freedom. <laughs> that's great. But, uh, you know, it's tricky, man. But I think that is, it's very say It's very telling right now that the most comfortable places to be are failed states. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, when um, yeah. back, back when uh, uh, Black Lives Matter was having their riots and protests at Antifa and all the Trump supporters were saying, oh, these guys are so awful. They're terrorists. They're this, they're that. And then it's like they don't understand. It's like you're all on the same side. The Black Lives Matter people, the, the people who stormed the Capitol. Now, now they're being called. Now libertarians are being called. This is why when people were calling Antifa terrorists, I was like, "What? Stop! They're not terrorists. Stop saying they're terrorists because they're going to turn that label onto you." And exactly. I predict exactly what they were going to do, and that's what they did. Now they're calling these Wall Street uh, bets guys. Now they're the terrorists now. Oh yeah. Oh, I was a terrorist too. I mean, <laughs> my wife said I was a terrorist. <laughs> so. <laughs> so you mentioned Michael Saylor, uh, ugly and. Um, a lot of people have been giving people like Michael Saylor and Jack Dorsey a lot of shit. And I've been defending those guys. And I know Jack Dorsey isn't perfect. He's done a lot of things that I disagree with. But to me, it's like, you don't understand. The, the Bitcoin revolution, everyone's going to be coming, become a Bitcoiner. You know, everyone, even the worst status is going to become a Bitcoiner. So the fact that, oh, Jack Dorsey believes in censorship so bad for Bitcoin. It's like, no, it doesn't matter. If he's using Bitcoin, he's a Bitcoin. And and we're not going to have ideological purity. There's going to be Antifa that's using oh, Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but and, I and, think they, I think we'd still pursue yeah. it. I, I, what I'm working on oh. now is because I, I was working on this other thing. I was kind of looking. I was looking at you know uh, the book that came out. Thank thank God for Bitcoin. But then I said, you know what? Some of this also really applies to Bitcoin. And I think there is such a thing developing now that we need to be looking at. And we might all be guilty of it. And that's what I I'm going to call Bitcoin fascism. That basically, and anytime that you're on, you go from an on-ramp or an off-ramp, you're partnering up to some degree with government. The and, system. Yeah, but you have to, do, I mean, like, for example, I don't use, I mean, here's Roger Veer, you know, he's a big believer in a peer-to-peer. -peer. I don't think it the block or Bitcoin will ever be cash. I think as bankers, we'll f figure out that solution off chain, but I pay, I, 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 I spend in, in fiat and I run my credit card debts all, every month and I pay it off. Uh, and which is just the most efficient, easiest way for me to do it. Uh, and I also recognize that anything I have in legacy accounts or even on an exchange, uh, any exchange, probably not BitMEX, BitMEX is the safest one because it'd be gone already. But that's very much subject to, to confiscability. Confisc it's not my Bitcoin. And for any reason, uh, it can be, you know, taken from me and then you've got these other really bastardized solutions like like back it and gptc which even more so but basically you we're already into this socialism where well you will not tax you as long as you put it in this little thing we create the ira and your you know this tax is at retirement fund uh, but and so then if you choose to play that game you've really kind of shot yourself in the foot You've decided to partner up with the fascists and say, well, I'm going to take my, my, and I'm doing the same thing. And Maybe I no, should. I'm using, I, I'm using their yeah. rules against them. I'm taking advantage of their rules and, and using them against them. I'm fine with that. Yeah. But, but I know they could take it. I know they could come in and take the money. You're also not expecting them to necessarily change the rules to benefit you. You know that you're playing against the house. 
So you yeah, know, and I know they can change the rules. I know that the the Roth IRA I have right now is tax free. I can trade all, I can make as much money, and then when I withdraw the money, uh, it's not going to be taxed. But I know they can change that rule, and I know they can go in there and take the money. But that's why I have Bitcoin. I, so I right. have no, I and, and I uh, and I, I get the, exactly, exactly. So you know, where, the, the point should be that people should know the difference between having your own Bitcoin and having your paper Bitcoin. Absolutely. Well, yeah, hey, most don't. Most don't. So. Absolutely. Yeah. GPTC is not Bitcoin. I, people ask me about GPTC. I'm like, yeah, if you want Bitcoin, uh, price exposure, buy it. But understand, you don't have Bitcoin if you have GPTC. I stress that point. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then the terminologies of so many of this stuff, I, I so really I object to you. I want to do one on KYC because uh, I'm a Bitcoiner. I believe in KYC. I'm an entrepreneur. You know what? Know your customer. As an entrepreneur, you're stupid if you don't. Mm. When I started and got out of prison, I didn't have a choice. Anybody that came along, I had to offer my services to, and some of the services I didn't like, and they're borderline fraud or fraudulent, but you know, they're paying me the money, what can I do? And, well, and, I, and I was just the platform, you know, I wasn't doing anything, but, but and that, so I had the same excuse that, that anybody else has. But uh, after a while, I could, just, I could know my customer. And so I, I was choosy. And, you know, they didn't meet certain standards that they couldn't be at least, you know, a rated on. Yeah, ugly. But that's not what that means. Like I, I get I get really irritated whenever you, you use that word like like that's not what that means. Right. KYC is a compliance term for spying on your customers and writing them out to the right. government. Well, I'm going to do right? that. It's not, it's me, not about understanding right. the market the and what motivations of your buyers, right? right? It's the, like, right. No, I agree. That's why the, the, the terms have been bastardized. We shouldn't allow them to use that kind of a term because knowing your customer is important. What's wrong is if I have to, yeah. the, the, the knowledge, the, 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 the information I'm gathering, I just, well, I'm gathering for you guys too. No, I'm not. I'm gathering for me. And yeah, okay, if you properly go through, and it used to be that way, if you send me a subpoena, I, you say, I have to turn it over to you, okay, and then I would notify the customer, I'm being subpoenaed. These other laws, you, banks, if you're violation of, they told me, we can't tell you about it. The bank secrecy is, they. if you're under SARS, a suspicious activity report, they can't even tell you that you're under suspicious activity report. That's the rule. It's illegal for a bank to tell you. And because they're collecting the data, not for, for, for their business, but for the no. government, that's a government surveillance surveillance i get the same i have the same with terminology is so important it's like it's people that say rent seeking well, there's nothing wrong with rent rent's a good thing you <laughs> own the property but that's not what they mean they change the term oh we, well we mean rent seeking is you know you're create you're you're getting something for your law i mean congress and getting yeah, it's rent, political that, propaganda and, just, and and that's not what because now that that really just is disturbing to the whole idea that oh there's something ill immoral about seeking rent no if it's your property you have every it's your property and you it's your you obligate you're creating wealth you have an empty warehouse you have an empty house and somebody they can't afford to buy it but they can't afford to rent it and they have a, an ongoing business that, that they want to develop so that's a i just hate some of the terminology i hate the terminology bitcoin maximalist <laughs> I'm a Bitcoin standard bearer, you know, I, I think yeah. I believe in Bitcoin and I'm not a maximalist, uh, except I, you know, we, we, I, you know, I, we embrace the term because it was meant as a, uh, it was meant as a compliment. It, from, no, it was meant as a, as an insult and, and we, and we well. embrace it as a compliment. <laughs> right. It was supposed to be derogatory and we <laughs> embrace it. So I get it. That was funny at the time, but I think it is really important to, to control the dialogue. The words have meaning. And when we take a word and then we make it the opposite meaning, it just, I mean, okay, it just makes communication that much more difficult. I think that's my view. But. Yeah, rent seeking is an economic term. It means when you totally. uh, get a certain- I know. Yeah, I studied it. It, 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 yeah. it developed about, about 30 or 40 years ago. Somebody wrote a book about it and that's what they termed it, but it's not, it's a terrible term. And, and rent is a bad word to, to most people, believe it or not. I know. As so that's why they used it. That's why. Yeah. If you're paying rent, it's always bad. And if you're in business, yeah. I get it because 
The hard one knows. <laughs> yeah, you wait cut you cut that and that, that that rent is you know you got that comes. Oh yeah, I avoided like the plague. Lives. It's that you know it's that that fixed overhead that just kills you when you're in business. So, but you got you know if you're starting out, you got to pay rent unless you own your property. You know, but so you said I, something I was about there, my... then there been that. Now I've got the problem. Now I'm the, you know, now I'm the one leasing and renting. So, yeah. you know, but yeah, you said something. Time. You said you wanted to go to Michael Saylor's um, uh, conference because you wanted to see what he had. And I, if you give me screen share for just a minute, I want to play something that Michael Saylor's. Because a lot of people think Michael Saylor's a bad guy because no, he didn't... I don't either. I, I, I think it's great. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad. It's just no, no, I not have... you, but. But people, there's people who hate on Michael Seller because like, oh, he's about he's no, he's about censorship or whatever. But let me just, I, I want to say something that he said recently. I hope I have the right clip. I don't know if you guys can give me screen share for just. I a think second. I know the clip. That's the one where he says not. Basically, it says not your keys, not your Bitcoin. He says go fuck yourself. That one. Yeah, that. Yeah, I saw that one. You that want me to play cool. that real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Carry on. All right. Let me see if it'll, it'll let me share the screen or not. I think, I think you get, right. yeah. yeah, as long as you have your key, they can take everything, but they can't take your Bitcoin. That's the whole thing. That's the key. I mean, they can torture you, and they, they there. That's the one. That's a great. That's a great. Yeah. All right, I'll go ahead and play it. Hopefully, hopefully the audience can hear it. I don't think they'll be able to hear it. Can you um, can you share the link in the? You want me to share the link or what? Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I share the link. We'll play it on this end. You know how to. Oh, you want to play from that end? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. sure thing. Let me. Well, I'll send it to you right now through uh through. Yeah, Telegram. I almost retweeted because that was so good. I saw that and I said, "Wow, that's he's got it down. Yeah. He understands." So, and I think that's where the hope is. I, and he, he's also saying, uh, you know, people, I don't, I think people misunderstood what he's saying too. Is he says, uh, uh, and that's why I want to attend this seminar because this is why I say the fundamentals have changed. The market dynamics has changed in Bitcoin. And he's saying, I'm not going to sell my Bitcoin. He didn't say he's not going to use Bitcoin. Guys, you've got, Bitcoin can now be used as collateral for a lot of different things, and you don't even have to expose much of it. For example, right now, I don't know what to do, but one of the things I am doing is I'm purchasing gold and I'm using Bitcoin as collateral for a speculative position. Now I might be wrong, but that's how how you do it, and that's how I think you know the new hedging uh, is. It used to be you could hedge between markets on Bitcoin. Uh, and you still can. You had the contangos and the and the backwardization, and those things still exist. But there's going to be other opportunities, uh, and you're going to be able just to use a small part of uh, Bitcoin to uh, enter into those uh, opportunities to, to new and and new things. It's it's going to be. Uh, and that's what the Bitcoin standard is about. We don't know what lies ahead, but that's what's so cool about it. That's what you're so much in the driver's seat. Even if you have a little hobble, you've got something that that's going to get you through uh, everything else. Now, it might be, you know, you might be under torture. You might be in jail. But at least when you get out of jail, <clears throat> the Bitcoin is going to be there. Right. Well, let's hear what Michael Seda has to say. Let's see if we can get this. Give me an example of something you can own a hundred million dollars on. He looks angry. <laughs> of where you can take personal custody of it and. Oh, I have to take it off full screen. No, it's yeah, it's just gonna have really slow frame rate apparently. Let's move see. It anywhere on Earth and where it yeah. Yeah. Anyway, people can look that. I'll try and retweet it on my Twitter, too. But it's really, it, I agree with that. I saw that. So, oh, that's great. That's exa it's exactly what it's about. And that's the whole thing. It's going to be building relationships with other uh, entrepreneurs. It's going to be entrepreneur to entrepreneur without going through a legacy system. That's what's building. That's what's happening. And that's why, you know, are we, are we the same as where we were uh, when we were at 20 and 30, 20,000 before? No, we're not because we're in new contract highs. Uh, so can we sell off? Yes, we can. Can we go down to 14,000? Yes, we can. Will we? Not? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's very, it depends upon if this is the move where entrepreneurs really start to wake up, we're going to figure this thing out, guys. And, uh, and, 
it's it's going to happen and you know it's already happening you know more and more uh it hayek uh outlined that what once you have this denationalization of money it's not going to be it's not going to have a national jurisdiction it's going to be outside of the system and it's not going to be cash it's going to be basically producers that's what he outlined and because that's what happened with the gold standard the gold standard you had a non-inflationary money creation and it was non-inflationary because it represented <clears throat> new goods coming in the marketplace including gold gold was simply the standard it was the governor it was the measuring stick and there's nothing wrong of a bank, banking, as long as it's sound, and as long as it truly represents new wealth coming into the marketplace, it was a market mechanism to not only increase the money supply, but also to decrease the money supply. And so and so you doesn't eliminate the business cycle completely, but it, when it happens, it happens quickly and recovers quickly. And we've never allowed that ever since you know, we created the Federal Reserve. We don't allow that anymore. We, we, we're always trying to fix it, uh, you know, and, 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 and stave off the catastrophe when those things need to be wiped out and we start over again. And we're basically just pushing the catastrophe further and further. To away another level. And taking it higher and higher. So, anyway, I mean, yeah, I... I I think this is a can be a very positive thing, particularly for uh, you know the new generation to understand what ne what they need to do, because what needs to be done in the future is quite radical, uh, and it's uh, completely different from most people's thinkings, uh, and it will be. <clears throat> uh, I, I I personally think there's a good chance that it, the governments to re reestablish their credibility for their local money will probably revert to some to the gold standard again which i think would be great because i think that way uh you know as bitcoiners we can choose what jurisdiction and within that jurisdiction we'll have relatively sound money uh with an honest limited government that's what we're all shooting for so uh uh you know the that's going to be the challenge because what's going to happen is is uh, we have to just be promoters of more freedom and not less. We have to understand, hey, the SEC, they're not the good guys. They're not ever going to regulate in a way that's going to favor the consumer. Consumer protection has never been consumer protection. And that's exactly the point The point we want to make about the whole GM, GME and AMC scandal that's going on right now. You're seeing the SEC and the government only legislating to help the hedge funds and the people who are getting burnt in this well, that was one of the things that I liked about the bailout. I mean, I'm to me that was the wake up call last November, and it was from the. I mean, there's no difference on the bailout between conservatives and, and the left and right. They're all in favor of it. The only difference was Trump threw a little bit to the public, you know, to that common guy. It was six hundred dollars <laughs> or whatever it was, you know. So that the canary in the birdcage. You know, because all of a sudden people say, you know, you just think initially, great, I got this money. But then all of a sudden they start thinking, well, wait a minute, if they can give me this much, why can't they give me more? Yep. And then after you say, well, if they can give me this, they can take it away. <laughs> <laughs> what did they do? That's they the went, way. They went, to buy, they went to buy Bitcoin and, and GameStop with that stimulus money. <laughs> they went to what? They went to buy GameStop and, and, and Bitcoin with that stimulus money. They, they right, screwed everything right. up. They screwed everything up. Yeah, yeah that's basically just, that's good. just showing what happens when you have an ever increasing And that's what I've done, you know, is, like I say, and to show how bad regulation is. And they actually, the Fins had actually changed it. I think they had a little thing where they showed how, how they try, were trying to, I guess, I don't know how much regulation they have over these financial advisors, but they changed that link. But I have that one article that has gotten quite a because I republish it all the time uh, about social security and dollar cost averaging and how, you know, if you were a financial advisor, you'd be kicked out of the association if you advise what I'm advising you to do. 
and that is dollar cost average Bitcoin. I said, here's the example, because you have all these radio ads that say, oh, you know, we're a financial advisor. Give us a call. We're, you know, you pay us and we'll tell you how to maximize your social security benefits. Well, I don't know of any of them that said, well, just buy, take your social security as fast as you can and buy Bitcoin with it. That's what I did. That's what I tell other people to do. And, you know, you, my, social, my social security made me a Bitcoin millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> That worked. But if, if, if I'd have been a financial advisor and made years than that, I'd been kicked out of the association and Finson had been all over me. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it's great. What's going on. Uh, Bitcoin yeah. voters. I, I think it, I think it, it it's exposed, but hopefully the reaction will be the right reaction. That's and, what we want to see, right? We yeah. don't want another just occupy movement that fizzles out and doesn't, actually make any change we want this to, to carry on and i think this is this is going to be 10 times more efficient than any occupy movement could ever be because this is hitting people where it hurts this is hitting the hedge funds yeah. on the book on the bank book right in the you know and i i believe bitcoin popped today and why well, because, this is a lot different oh, yeah, than the yeah, occupy yeah, yeah, movement yeah. because the occupy movement the occupy movement had the <laughs> well this has a profit proof, right <laughs> again like this isn't just ideological rage this is This is greed. Greed is a lot more reliable. So <laughs> unless they completely stifle the ability of of nerds to actually coordinate online in order to buy stocks and 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 squeeze uh, hedge funds that are short, unless they somehow ban outsider trading dot net, <laughs> there's a website now outsider trader dot net, then they're done. Like they're screwed. Like they're just. They're, These people are going to keep finding. Why wouldn't they just keep finding the next stock? They, they're talking about uh, retail investors not being able to buy individual stocks. The dirty that, secret. That's going to be the only solution to this kind of problem, yeah. right? And, and the dirty secret is we can't already. By now, we can't. When you buy a stock with a brokerage firm, you're not actually buying the stock, just like what Ugly was talking about earlier. Right. The, the is is another company. Uh, called CD and Company. It's not even you're not even the actual owner of the stock. The the uh, some other uh, company called DTCC owns the stock. Right. So it's it's basically the same thing as not you know when you can't take possession of of your actual stock certificate, it's the same as not being able to take a Bitcoin out of any exchange that you have it on. You don't really own anything. Correct. It also means you can't lose your keys. So all these people who are talking about tokenized securities. It's like, yeah, let's tokenize securities, but if I lose my keys and I have a dividend stock, does that dividend keep getting paid even though that money is going nowhere and no one actually has access <laughs> to that security anymore? So that's why I, I think a lot of the solutions are dumber than the yeah, actual I mean, those problem. are UX problems that need to be solved and they probably can be solved. Yeah. I mean, they could be solved. I think, I think the solutions, like, I think we could build uh, a crypto stock exchange, you know, like mm -hmm. a, like an asset bearer crypto stock exchange. Um, there is... There's but people that, would, that are that trying, you know, but I mean, yeah. But it I would think it's, require you know, that be... we have that on-ramp into yeah. the traditional system. If you can't get a hold, if, if they won't serve us, then, you know, you can build all yeah. the decentralized solutions you want. If they won't yeah. let it. Well, Fenton, Bruce them. Fenton has a, has a brokerage company that, that is entirely anonymous. Uh, like you can, you can mail, well, it was not entirely anonymous, but you can mail them the data so that like your, your KYC stuff so that it's never digitized. And then they'll over review it and then they'll, they'll, I don't know if they have to store it, they'll store it physically. So you're protecting yourself from data leaks, which is one of my major critiques of, of KYC is that this, these exchanges and corporations and banks and, and, and big tech, they have failed time and again Miserably. to protect people's privacy and data getting hacked over and over again, leading to millions, $14 million dollars worth of, um, I think or billion, $14 billion dollars worth of identity oh, yeah. theft in 2014 and it, and it grew more in 2016. But so it's, it's a huge problem just from a security perspective and an authentication perspective. So, but, but no, okay. So Bruce Fenton has sort of this uh, brokerage firm that, that you can, you can mail them the data, but I mean, anyway, I mean, it, it's an interesting topic. I, I haven't entirely given up on the, on the possibility of, of crypto, uh, like crypto digitizing the stock market, but You know, it's it's not a simple issue. Maybe this will right, push exactly. that forward, it's but not there's an easy big solution UX problems. Anyway, well, guys, I got I have to go. Uh, so I'll try to catch up. I'll try to get get back on in a few minutes. Later, right, well, thanks for coming on, Juan. Yeah. That's great Good to see hear you. from you. Yeah, I mean, I and that's one thing that I have, I have predicted. I said one thing you're going to see is you're going to see more and more uh, 
uh, things that you can on ramp. You know, Bit Bitmex created the shitcoin market where you can actually short Bitcoin without owning it, which is great. Actually, earn Bitcoin doing it shitcoin. and shorting Bitcoin. And they also the, that was just one of the innovations. The other innovation is the perpetual futures, and the the other innovation is that they have a commission structure. So if you're a successful trader and making the market, you actually can get paid. I mean, I didn't realize that I make five to 10% of my profit trading is from, from because I'm a market maker. I, I knew I was making something, but I didn't know it was that much. Uh, so that's a, these are, these are new Bitcoin innovations. And, and, uh, and you're going to see more and more. I think you're going to see more and more platforms like this. I know it's like, there's a platform that we use to buy gold, evolve, that take Bitcoin. There was an, a brokerage firm that had various stocks on it, but they shut that one down. I think it was one broker or something like that. I traded on it once or twice, but it was, it was, it was a bucket shop. But you know what? Uh, a bucket shop is okay as long as you, you're, you're, oh, you know, you understand what's going on, and you know, that's what fiat. Yeah, I'm not be, be, be a, a, a copy, uh, copy of that. What is that? When anyway, buyer beware. Yeah, you know, that you need to be aware of, of the things that you're using, and and the market finally the the the. I mean, I lost probably more Bitcoin than I than my. I know it's more than my. I mean, I I know I lost a lot of Bitcoin uh, off of exchanges, uh, and uh, or value. I know I, I had Ethereum. It was all taken from. Big bits of Cripsy, Cripsy, Cripsy. That was one. But I, I lost on a lot, lot of exchange. I know I lost a hundred Bitcoin on another exchange. Um, so it was a lot of, but that was the growing pains. And then the the legitimate markets emerged from that. And the one that's the most legitimate, the one that can't be shut down, is exclude. They have no on or off ramp. It's Bitcoin. You trade Bitcoin, and they have derivatives on Bitcoin which you're going to see more and more and more of that. That's the new way. That's what's coming. That and that that is where we actually take control back. Yep, I agree. And because they're respecting uh we're, we're respecting one another's private property and as bitcoiners and as bitcoin bankers that's what's going to develop it's going it, you, we're going to find out we don't need the bank in the middle of our transactions anymore. Or if we do, we can we can build our own clearinghouse within the people that we know, exactly. you know, and that's what knowing your customers is going to be about. I want to know the people I'm doing business with, you know, and yeah, you somebody might get hit. They're going to make it. They're going to go, but it's not going to take down. Every, it never took down everybody. It took down maybe one sector. You make a bad move, you know, you're going to lose some of your Bitcoin. Hopefully, you're smart enough that. You're managing your money. You're not risking all your Bitcoin on one stupid play. That's how people lose money. Uh, you know, trading that's how Bitcoin. Get that's how they get wrecked. That's and the ruined. difference between money management and and trade. You say as long as you manage that that hodl, you're going to do just fine. But that's hard to do because the problem is we all think we are so smart. We think we know where the market's going. <laughs> Guys, I mean, I don't know where the market's going. And once you understand that, once you realize you don't know. Wow, now you can start doing stuff, you know, because you're going to hit some licks and you're going to take some hits. That's just the way, that's just the way life goes. And uh, hopefully you don't take any big ones. I had to take a couple big hits to learn that. So hopefully I, that's thing I can pass on. It's uh, all, it's all the big picture is I don't see. Here's the thing. I don't want people to focus on what happened this week. If you zoom out a little bit, there's a whole thing happening, which is, this overall big revolution, which is similar to what I said when I gave my speech at your conference, Ugly, this, this, this whole revolution that's happening, which is Bitcoin, internet, they're not gonna be able to stop these guys. Uh, if you shut down their subreddit, they're gonna go somewhere else. If you shut down their Discord, they're gonna go find some other website. They're gonna, these people are not going away. You can stop them one way or another way, but they're gonna eventually, when they, when they can't buy any more stocks, what are they gonna figure out? They can fuck everybody. Oh, they can fuck the Fed. Forget about the hedge funds. They can screw the Fed by buying Bitcoin. And that's what they're going to end up doing. 
Well, I'm kind of glad you brought that up, Bitcoin Motors, because we need to have another one of those conferences of the, the working man's. And the thing is, we don't have to do the cruise anymore. We've got this yeah. place down here. Uh, well, you know, the goat lady's been building that house. He's getting almost. Yeah. There. We'll probably be sure. moving into it. So the, the, the house across the street, we've got a big place down here. There's, so, there's definitely room and for so people, we but... you know I'm, I'm looking and hopefully we'll have a professional studio down here too so we can really do a better job than what we did on the cruiser and now i've got all these other toys too so yeah. anyway yeah. i'll i'll be you just have to that. figure out i, you figure out I need to figure out yeah we we'll figure, figure that out we'll keep a small little small conference but i think it'd be great to to do it and see see i'll have to talk because I, you know, see, but I want to promote. I mean, maybe we'll get one or two big name guys, but we don't need them. I, I want to promote the little guys that are out there doing stuff like, like, like this, or wants to do stuff too. I mean, there's just an unlimited opportunity in here. And, so uh, that, and that's a, that's again, uh, you know, a call out to any members of our group who wants to come down and do stuff. Get in touch with them because he's open to anything. And these guys who are complaining about the hedge funds getting bailed out. You can't bail out the hedge funds if the dollar is worthless. Think about that. You can't what? Bail out the hedge. You can't bail the hedge funds out of, yeah. with with what money? With if the dollar. Go down. Let's see what they're saying on the. Yeah. On let's the uh, take chat. the chat questions. Um, There's a few good. I, I saw a few good comments in there. Right. Um, One of them was from uh, about. Uh, I think it was from. Was it from Brandon or who said this? It was about uh, interactive brokers. Uh, let me see. What did he say? Shoot, I can't find it now. Oh, here it is. No, it wasn't Brandon, it was Gabriel. Gabriel said, interactive broker CEO claims that he fears that some people will not be able to pay the losses uh, and the broker <laughs> to, to cover it. So that's why they restricted trade. So maybe some of these brokers were allowing- Well, I no, and I and I get that. They they can't, They if nothing else, they, they have to require, if they're buying it on margin, usually what they do is they just allow a cash market. If you're buying it, I mean, that's what they did on the silver futures. They just, they, they actually, unless you, you had to show you had the silver or you had to put up 100%. I don't or, think or that's happening you know, now. Even I more. think they're allowing very over leveraged positions. Yeah, and that's the problem. If these guys are, are on leverage and this, the bubble bursts, uh, they're going to lose. So uh, that's not an unreasonable thing. That, that's not changing the rules in the middle of the game because that's part of what you sign up for. Uh, if you're if you're trading on margin now they what they can't do and should never do is uh, you know close down that cash market and if you've got the stock uh, you know then you should be able to to sell it or if you have the money and you want to buy it and you don't want to buy it on a speculative basis then that's fine too uh, that, you know that's the game but but yeah the margin is what's going to kill you that's what kills everybody that's what you know uh, that's what kills people. You know, how many people do you know of Bitcoin motorists that are Bitcoiners and they lost their all their hodl, you know, because they speculated? Yeah, and it's really most, sad. And most of my personal friends who were, who were not hardcore Bitcoiners, who I told about Bitcoin, they bought Bitcoin and then they bought Ripple and they bought Ethereum and then they, they, they got out. At some point uh, during the bear market, they got out. None, none of them held. Yeah. If you don't hodl and understand what that is about, it's just like there's nothing wrong with owning GameStop. But if you, you know, if you own it now, I mean, I don't know anything about the business. Maybe there's actually something to it. I don't know, uh, but it doesn't sound like it. And but they do sound like if they've got a bunch of big boys squeezed. Well, you know what? The big boys pay the price. You know, you 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 just that's it. That's what you play. You play pay the piper, you play the game and you know, it, you're, that's it. It's not fair otherwise. So I'm gonna show, hand me this guy. Did you, did you see this yet? Oh, see yeah. our new addition? This is Layla, I think they call her. Matt, there she is. Layla, hi Layla. <laughs> She's really <laughs> a gentle little dog. You just make the movie. So at any rate, there we go. And we got Whitney here too. A cross between oh. a poodle and a schnauzer. So I, I don't know. I'm not a big dog fan. I do have a dog. I'm hopefully going to train 
here. I got to find somebody to do it because I don't have time. But I how's how's Honey Bear doing? Well, that's who I need to get. Honey Bear. I need to get Honey Bear trained so he because he. Yeah. I call him Honey Bear. But I, I don't know if I have time. I, I I don't have time. But I mean, if he's going to be my guard dog, then I'm going to have to. Somebody. I was so so ugly. I was with you for a week. At the beginning of the week, Honey Bear and Whitney were exactly the same size. Uh, <laughs> no, honey, not anymore. No. Honey Bear. By the end great. of the week, but. By the end of the week, one week later, Honey Bear was actually slightly bigger. So, <laughs> uh, Big Bear is like calling, calling. I think I, I Big Bear is what his name is, or Honey Bear is probably better. But now he's uh, probably Big Bear. He's probably grown. By he's now. big, but I need to get. Um, that's something I need to do. Maybe today or tomorrow. I need to get a hold of a trainer because I. But you know, I just I'm not a real big dog fan. I had one dog in my life that I love, but every, like my what we've had. We've got, I don't know how many, never know how many dogs. We got dogs. Yes. I got dogs everywhere. We never. I remember. And she loves pit bulls, you know, and we have guard dogs. You know, but well, the only one they bite is me, you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, and I'm, at any rate, it's just, uh, they, they haven't caught the burglars yet. They just catch me. And then all that, we have all the security and, Seems like I'm the one that gets <laughs> locked out. Yeah, Nobody really. else does. So they make it. It's like Bitcoin security. You know, at what point is it just not worth it anymore? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, you got to live a life. You can spend your whole time just securing your Bitcoin. You know, right? So, so Bob Shaman is as IRA confiscation is hypothetical, but panic withdrawing guarantees a payment to the tax man. Right. Uh, if you withdraw before you're 59 and a half, you get a 10% penalty on top of the taxes. Yeah. Is it only 10%? I thought it was much more actually. Well, it oh. ends up being a lot more. It ends up being like half because there's it's a 10% like 40% penalty. or something, right? Plus income tax. Uh, well, but the great right. thing about the Roth IRA is that there's, it's at least for now, they may change it later, but for now there's no uh, tax on it. You only have the penalty if you, drew, if you, if you withdraw it early, as far as I know. Okay. Well, here's what I'm saying to, to Bob Shamley here. Uh, yeah, it is hypothetical until it happens, uh, but and that's the, the risk. So it's it's all a man a uh, matter of money management and risk. What I've been saying, I'm not telling people sell out your your IRAs. Maybe you should, but it depends upon your situation. If you can what, afford to risk it, yeah. If you can afford that loss and take a complete hit, then it's fine. But what I have recommended people do, if your only uh, assets are in your home and in your retirement account and in social security, you are extremely vulnerable. And if you don't have, you know, at least 15% of that in Bitcoin, I would, I don't hesitate to recommend at any point, just selling, you know, taking your hit wherever, be, be selling your house and moving into a smaller house, you, you, you're selling a portion or all of your retirement account, and you need to get on board with some Bitcoin because that's going to be, it's, it's money management. It's not the, you know, I get it. I have three grown sons and they're, you know, if you're part of the legacy system, fine, but don't come crying to me, you know, when the big confiscation happens here, because you know, what, what big brother can give it, the big brother will take it away. And, and, it's just a and one of, of the time. quickest ways to learn that is to get into Bitcoin. I was a peer to peer seller of Bitcoin for about two years and ran through about 10 different banks that will no longer do business with me, even though I did nothing wrong. I, I had a similar experience, Stefan. I had yeah. a similar experience. I think it's, and that's both in the UK and in Denmark, where, where I've been selling both ways. It's, you know, people, they would just shut you down for not yeah. fitting And, and you're not going to be able to get into Bitcoin. And if you notice, that's the other thing I got from Michael Saylor. He, when he recognized it, it and he was moving a lot of money, he had to, first of all, make sure he was compliant because he didn't want to break. I don't want to break the law. I pay taxes, guys. I don't, no, I'm not recommending you, you, you I, I avoid, I, I avoid taxes, but I don't evade taxes. You know, <laughs> there's a big difference. There is a big difference. And so, uh, you know, I don't, but he, he outlined, it took a long time and they, they didn't want to expose their hand, what they were doing. Uh, if we had a deliverable Bitcoin contract, 
it would have been very easy. But I've said all along, oh, we have deliver, we have futures. Now, now you don't have a deliver of futures. We never have, because if we did, all they had to do was buy the back at certificate and take delivery. You can't. All you can get is a cash delivered back at certificate, which you can't ever, they won't send it to your private key. Interactive brokers said they would, but they haven't. And I don't think they ever will. Because once Amazing. you have that deliverable contract, uh, you know, now you have, there is, uh, it's the, the, what is that? The uh, ebb and flow, not ebb and flow, the stock and flow, stock and flow uh, uh, model. Model, yeah, where you, you, you got a fixed amount. You, there's no, I mean, gold has a, a stock and flow where, yeah, your price goes up, you're going to find new gold. You're not going to find any new Bitcoin. In fact, more and more is going to disappear. <laughs> it's the opposite. It's not even like there's 21 million out there. There's 21 million less all of it that's been lost. There's probably more 16 to 18. I don't know. Point. You know, we don't know that, but that that's the, it's a different game. It just is. And it's not, uh, it's, it's, uh, you, you gotta, you know, it just, if you're into just being, into a, your legacy accounts, you're extremely exposed. You're not going to be able to make that switch. Uh, it'll be too late. Um, ugly. You're, you're not going to be able to buy Bitcoin. I have, yeah. I have a question for you uh, because I, I respect your advice a lot. You're talking about the legacy system now. Uh, what do you think about diversifying at some point, maybe now or maybe sometime in the near future, into real estate where you take some of your Bitcoin, you either you either use it to buy real estate or you use it to, as collateral to buy real estate and you get yourself a stream of income from rent. Do you think that's a good idea or do you think yeah, that's- Yeah, no, well, that's what it, we've done. I mean, if you're down here, look, before I was, <clears throat> I had a small business that I built from scratch, from nothing. I had to use credit card debt to buy equipment. I knew, I knew how to use debt. I had, you know, initially they give me, uh, interest-free debt on the credit card for, you know, they have those programs where you get it for, you know, a year or 18 months. So the first years I was shuffling back and forth and never paying interest. And then finally, of course, they cut that off. And, you know, now the credit card debt is, you know, it pays most of them are anywhere from 18 to 29% interest are in there. Maybe a few that are lower for special deals, but still very high interest rate. But, you know, my it took years for me when I got out of prison. You know that was 2002. I incorporated in 2004, and I built. I, I bought probably almost a half a million dollars worth of equipment. It's all out. They're worthless now because it's all tech stuff. <laughs> and they were. I had. You know. I developed a business, and uh, at my high point, I probably had 150 thousand dollars worth of credit card debt but it was before I met my wife. And so she never, and she comes from a very poor background. She never understood debt at all. And so they, look, my love, I need to pay this off because it'd be like making a thousand dollars a month, which was a lot of money back then. But finally I did it on my own because you know we had the demands of a family. And then and my, with my hodl, yes, I was able to trade and we have real estate now. I We have, uh, you know, three houses and a mission here in, in uh, uh, Ensenada. I'm looking to perhaps buy other real estate, even in Columbia or some other place. Uh, uh, I, I don't want to just be here. So that's, yeah, I don't think you want to have, a I'm not talking about that. I'm talking, if you, if you don't have a hodl, then you want to be your, you need to build your hodl. If you have, I have a hodl that I've taken care of my family. Even if I lose my hodl now, my family is taken care of for the rest of her life for where we're at and where she's at. So let's say you're a person who a couple of years ago did what, did what you recommend. You've had 15% you've had of your net worth in Bitcoin. Obviously now you've got a lot more. So yeah, that, I have more than 50. Yeah, I have, I have probably, you know, I've got probably 50% or more in, 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 in Bitcoin. At one time it was a, at one time, my only asset was my business. I mean, it, that's how I earned my living. And right. I, but I never, but it was a, 
it was, I, I had to build that business. I had to acquire debt. But when I acquired debt, I wasn't buying TV sets. I wasn't buying pinball machines. <laughs> you know, I wasn't buying dart boards. I, I wasn't buying, I wasn't buying these little racers that we're having fun with. That's my luxury. That's I'm, you know, you humor an old man, and let him die with his <laughs> toys. Uh, but I didn't have toys. Okay. I have toys now. Uh, but they're a small part. I can lose all my toys and they'll be just fine. And, and like I say, really, all I really need, and that's why I can adjust to Mexico so easily, I just want electricity and hot water and internet. But, you know, actually, that took a long time. My wife still doesn't get it because it's not <laughs> a big priority down here. You know, if you don't have water, it's no problem. You know, you, you don't have electricity. It's no problem. You deal with it. <laughs> and, you know, I'll be sitting down there. I was working, had my business going. All of a sudden, everything goes out. You know, what happened? Oh, I forgot to pay the electricity. Because down here in Mexico, if you don't pay the electricity on the day it's due, they cut it off the next day. <laughs> you know, there's no mercy uh, when, when it comes to, to that. Uh, which, Okay, and the same thing with the uh, internet. You know, I'd be sitting there doing my work. What ha happened? Oh, or cell phone, same thing. And then water, and then water's not dependable anyway, even though, you know, we're kind of a dry area. And last week we had about three days where we didn't have water. So you have an extra water supply of Pilata, but our Pilata, one of the houses didn't work. So I came over here to take my showers. So, but we're using that. She's building a house that has no electricity and no water. <laughs> Well, I've never done that before, and I wouldn't even care to, but that's her thing. It's a different, like I say, if we go into some kind of economic collapse, it's not going to affect Mexico hardly at all. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need Walmart. You know, we have Walmart, but there are people down here are, you, are used Walmart, to getting by on nothing. We have a Walmart, but you know. There's actually two of them. So, yeah, so I, think, I think now I understand what you're saying because I don't think I was getting it at first because. Uh, of course, real estate is very easily confiscatable. Yeah. What you're, you're not saying don't have real estate, don't have legacy accounts. What you're saying is have your HODL first. Right. Then you can that stuff. That's and what you're saying. Get your HODL. So I'm saying if all you have is real estate, if all you have is, your, I mean, I'm looking at all I know is the average American household. Most people, their number one asset is their home and their number two asset is their retirement account. Right. If that is all you have, you are a sitting duck for confiscation. Not that it will be confiscated. Hopefully it never will be, but that is the risk, the unacceptable risk that you have. And if you're that, if that's where you're at, downsize your house, sell out half of your, pay the tax and switch it to Bitcoin. You know, if you're, if you want to take a speculation, I mean, there was a guy when we were at the, uh, I don't think you went to the, the Latin America Bitcoin conference in, in uh, Bogota. That's where I met Tone, I think for the first time. Yeah, I know Tone went there and he yeah, liked that conference a lot. Yeah, and that, that's a good conference. They, they sell some shit corners there, but, but it's a good <laughs> group of guys. I only went to that one. I did get the last one. Uh, but, but we want to go to all those. Uh, but there was a guy from Argentina and he was just bragging about his son because his son had a condo and he was learned about Bitcoin and he sold his condo and rented a little place, cut way back and bought Bitcoin with it when Bitcoin was, I don't know, three or four hundred dollars any rate. When we were there in 2017, that's when it went up to 20,000. So that Bitcoin that that selling the the condo and buying the Bitcoin now he could at that time trade it in for twenty or thirty or forty condos and uh, so that's that's what you want to be doing and that's the whole thing I mean I I've had people that you know we recommended all last year you know dollar cost average get into Bitcoin and none of them did it. But boy, they they call, all they call, when it went up to 40,000, they were all calling me, oh, I wish I'd done what, you know, I said, well, it's never too late. When you buy Bitcoin, you buy it yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Is it great buying here? I don't know. It's like, like people it don't want to hear that. It's like, no, the, they, the, don't. The, they don't want to hear it. They say, oh, I just heard about this, yeah. this new uh, Cardano. What do you think about that? It's like, 
No, I told you five, <laughs> five Bitcoin and forget all that other, other crap. And it's like, no, but what about this other? Oh, I heard they're going to they're gonna be partnering with Google. It's like, no, that's all. Not, and they, they don't want, it's like, it's too simple. It's like, they think it's supposed to be complicated. They're, they're supposed to outsmart everybody else. I'm like, just buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin every month when you get your check, when you get your commission check or whatever you, you and business. At this guys, point, that, and that's the secret to trading, guys. People think, oh, I must have some magic beans. Or I know there's a... No, the whole key is if you manage your funds. If you manage, you're going to do fine. I'm not that good a trader. You got, I got a lot of most of my guys that are on the group right now. They're better TA guys than I am. You know, and right now everybody's thinking, "What? Well, I'm not doing anything." They're probably, "Oh, well, I'm not getting my money's worth." But I'm kind of teaching you a lesson. I, this is, hands. You don't always have to trade. You know, I don't need to do this anyway. And I just, you know, I I didn't. I learned something about BitMix I didn't know because I didn't realize. Oh, I anyway. If you're a member of the group, if you want to join the group, guys, we can do that. I need to plug my. If you're this is open to the public, guys. If you're listening to this, all of my stuff is available publicly. But I do sell my actual trades, my trading record that, that I started making public in uh, 2018 on Medium, uh, and I when I like to two Bitcoin into 22 Bitcoin in about six weeks. And then I opened it up and I sent all my, I sent all my trades from February 4th of 2019. I, I think we started with two and I wound up with 32 at the end of the year. And then last year I started with 0.6. I had to add another 0.6, but we ran into 47 Bitcoin, which I took out last year. That's the way you do it. But I'm not a magic trader. I don't, I don't never predicted anything. Uh, you just, you just, uh, there's techniques that you can use, but the number one thing is it's all sub, it's all subservient to, uh, uh, money management. And then after that come your fundamentals, Bitcoin, the fundamentals of Bitcoin are not even Bitcoin. If we had sound money, we wouldn't need Bitcoin. <laughs> it's that simple. It's because we don't have sound money that you have Bitcoin at you know forty thousand dollars. Because we don't have sound sound money that we have these all these crazy all this crazy speculation going on. Once we have sound money, uh, the whole view of the world and long term projects will are going to blossom and bloom. Uh, and you, we can very rather quickly just come into another incredible, unbelievable gilded age. Uh, but the problem is now everybody's reacting like a bunch of chickens with their heads cut off uh, because they're, you know, you've been victimized, you've been swindled, you've been misled. And the, the Bitcoin is Bitcoin, because it cannot be create, uh, created. I mean, it's all been created that's going to be created, or some of it's not released yet. But, but uh, we know what the supply. We know is what the be. supply is, and uh, and it it can't be taken. That the quality is it can't be confiscated. It people don't you you can it's pretty well censorship proof, but it's censorship resistance. You, you know, it's not censorship proof depending upon how you use it and it's easy to transfer and it's gonna there's gonna be things that are going to be built on top of it that's where the future is but it's not because bitcoin is is really it, the, the innovate it the, that's the innovation those three things and it's just like the innovation of gold gold was not the innovation gold's been used for thousands of years the innovation at the turn of the century was the, the gold, gold standard. standard where you had, it was the innovation of banking where you, the banks through a free market banking regulated this money supply and it worked. It worked so well that the people that, wow, this is working so well, we need to have full control of it. Let's nationalize it. And that's what they did. So what's happening is you don't want to see, we don't want to have Bitcoin nationalized. Yeah, we just want it to be the standard. And that's, on a that level. is one thing that, you know, I'm a little bit concerned of. The more and more we get Bitcoin into these legacy systems. Uh, but uh, and Michael think, Saylor was on the right track. He says, that's just what, that is the foundation. This is where Bitcoin takes you a part of it. Everything else I have can be taken. And this is a good place to bring in Hurley D'Souza's comment from YouTube, where he says, 
It's much harder to buy GBTC than to buy BTC spot like on Bitstamp. He's been trying for months to get a broker to where he can buy GBTC. He's from Germany. But that is exactly his point. That's true. He, a lot of brokers don't let you buy uh, GBTC because it's not it's a it's a pink sheet. Uh, it's a pink sheet security. It's OTC market, which is a little bit more difficult to Exactly, yeah. and and that is so ugly's point. When you've got in, when you want it in the legacy system, you're you're seeing that you you can't even get in. So obviously, you're not getting into the real Bitcoin here. You're you're getting into a paper Bitcoin, and and it's even hard to get that. Yeah, exactly. And so Hurley, he wouldn't. I I know that ugly would not recommend that you buy GBTC. Just buy your spot, as as Brandon says. Mm -hmm. I would recommend people. Um, well, I don't want to say recommend, but but I mean, <laughs> careful with that. Yeah, you get exposure to Bitcoin is through like a retirement account. Then maybe GBTC might be a good option. Of course, talk to your financial advisor. I'm not a financial advisor, but but that's that's one option that kind of makes sense. But I know I know ugly. But you also, but but you have to do that in in the money management, you know, view of can you afford to lose it? If it's it's nice if you can afford to lose it to have exposure to BTC through that vehicle. But you need to understand you're not actually exposed to real BTC. You're just exposed yeah. to paper price changes. Yeah, it's a trust. It could go under just like any other. Well, exactly. right. And the whole thing is if the government comes in and goes to Paris City Bureau and says, well, you know what? Uh, you, we can't let, allow this anymore and you can't have the Bitcoin. And so it's our Bitcoin now. Deal with it. He's not. He, that's it. He's, you're he's done. Not, he's not going to hold it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah he, he, he's not. He's going to turn it over to him. Uh, before he dies. I mean, it's just like, uh, you know, when, when his brother, when, when the guys got indicted from BitMEX, they kind of said, well, ha, ha, ha. I don't, I can sleep at night because, you know, I'm not, I'm playing their game. And I go, well, ha, ha, ha. How about maybe you can sleep at night, but can your customers? I, I wouldn't, you know, I don't want to have my money on your exchange or legacy exchange, maybe to trade it, but I don't want you to hold it for me. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's not a ha 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 thing. This is serious shit. And you know what, if we don't have the balls to support uh, the guys that are really taking the heat right now, which is Samuel Reed, who's essentially under a house arrest. It's a good thing that he, you know, they let he him out, out at least on that, but the rest of them are out on lamb and out on the run. <clears throat> and I hope they never catch up with them. I don't think they ever will. This is a very important battleground. This is where the, they are the tip of the spear, and we got to get behind them. These are our warriors, you know, and if you don't have balls for the fight, that's on you, okay? It's but the, I'm not asking you to go have balls for the fight. Just, you know what? They need our support. Exactly, because otherwise no one's going to be there for you when it comes down yeah, to the Yeah, when it line. boils down to it, we have to watch each other's backs. I'm sitting here in Mexico. I feel like I'm not the front line. You guys are sitting there in the United States are extremely exposed right now. I'm here. If I'm not going to be surprised. Look, I tweeted out the last time I went across the border. We have the kiosk leaving. They have these kiosks. They're built. The computers are there. You're not going to be able to leave. Right now, you've been able to freely leave the country uh, and come down to Mexico. Nobody checks you or anything. That's not all of a sudden overnight. Because they oh, we're going to check you, and you're they're going to you may or may not be able to come into Mexico. And it's not because Mexico is not going to let you in. Okay, it's, it's because America is not going to let you out. And you need in to understand the whole wall thing. I, it was just a phony, Build incredible the wall. hoax. I mean. I can't. I could see it then. I said the people that wanted, the, and they didn't build it. They had never built it all across anyway. And the walls have never worked, but they haven't built far enough. Nobody in California can escape. You can still walk, get across in maybe Arizona, New Mexico, and Texas, you know. But who's going to do that in the middle of the desert? We might be. <laughs> we might like say we just might be the new underground, the first station of new underground railroad of you slaves trying to leave America. You know, yep. but you better have your Bitcoin because your IRA <laughs> not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna come pick you up for, <laughs> for your dollar. You're gonna have to have Bitcoin to get the ticket. <laughs> get, I called it. I out. called it in 2016 when when they when all the conservatives were saying we got to vote for Trump so that we can get the wall. I'm like, they're not gonna build the wall, and if they do build the wall, it's gonna be used to keep you in. You do understand that? No one believed me, but we no, know no. that. No, no, no. 
And, and yeah, and, 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 and I say, they, they, they say I, you know, I, to me, I, I've written about Trump, and <clears throat> he's the best president I've ever seen. But that doesn't <laughs> say that that says bad things about our president. <laughs> I don't know. I think he was <laughs> just anything. I didn't say anything good about him. I just said, you know, he's the best president I've ever seen. <laughs> you know, because he's not. He wasn't a politician. But, uh, you know, it's just like I've been I reading challenge that. I know Tone says that, too. He's not a po he's just yeah. as as anybody else, I think. Well, not a established part, an insider politician. Yeah, I, it depends on how you <laughs> want to define the thing. But, you know, he's not he's not a he's not was not a professional politician. He hasn't he hasn't been an office. It's the only office that he had. Well, he was a professional was con man, which is basically the same. So, thing, right? yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I mean, I mean he, was, he was established in the sense that he was in the whole New York scene. He schmoozed with all the politicians. He wasn't some weird outsider that got in there. He no, was no, 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 no. I mean, I, I I agree with that. But yeah, I mean, the, then the real thing. I mean, you you see the real uh, people that take, you know, I never I've been for some of the things he's done and against a lot of the stuff that he's done. But that uh, you know, and I think you know, Ron Paul's a classic example. I mean, Ron Paul's stood up against the spending. He stood up against the bailout. He stood up against the wall, and yet he's being censored along with <laughs> yeah. everybody else. So okay, yeah. what else do we have? We're libertarians or terrorists. That's what they say about us. Yeah. Or at least like you, but. Yeah, we're free market terrorists, guys. Yeah, which is a point of Brandon's comment on when unregulated exchanges are more fair than the regulated and the failed states are more free than the established. That's where yeah. we're at. Yeah. And don't get surprised when when you suffer the consequences. Okay. So ugly. I've, I've been on, this is my second live stream of the day and I'm going to be on another one tonight at seven o'clock for with Bitcoin Magazine. Well, good. So, I'm going to be on a live stream a lot today, so I may, I may drop out here. All right. Well, thanks uh, for showing up, buddy. Yeah, so we'll, like, good to have you. Take we'll on and, uh, I, I'm glad you came on because you reminded me we need to. Uh, well, I need to start work. Probably have some kind of a uh, working man's Bitcoin cruise again yeah. here in the fall. I'll t try and I need. I don't want to conflict with others, others, but uh, the the best weather down here is September Sorry, and October months. and October. Months. Yeah. August is too hot. Now, you can be hot and it has bugs and stuff. I, August is okay too. All righty, but yeah, we'll, we'll I'll see. come down and see. I'll, I'll, I'd love to come down and uh, and we can have another. All right. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. really we're supposed to have a lot of rain this weekend, so I don't even know. We we're gonna try. We, it's been snowing we out, for the last two days here. It's still huh? snowing. Awesome. I love it here. Oh my God. Okay. Snowing right. for the last two. Thanks days. for coming, All Bitcoin right. Motors. I'll catch you later. Yeah, right. have a good one. Great talking uh, to you. There is a good question from Brandon to round off with, which how do you hodl and manage risk through a bear market? Well, there's no risk hodling. That's what you need. You just need to, to uh, pull up one of my articles with, that shows the dollar cost averaging. And there's little or no risk as long as you're hodling. As long as you're buying the Bitcoin and you're taking possession of it, uh, actually, what you want is a bear market because that's your accumulation. Now, I teach Bitcoin is the hyperwave. It's the only, uh, uh, it is it is the blockchain. Anything else is just a wannabe. It is uh, the only real innovation. Uh, and I like the idea of, dollar cost averaging because it is a disciplined way uh, as long as you buy a fixed dollar amount every month or every week or every day whatever time it, what time whatever time frame you pick is arbitrary but the results are you're going to naturally buy more bitcoin at low levels and at, at high levels so just scroll down there to where we see the Dollar results of dollar cost averaging. <sighs> okay. There we there go. We so just start at the top and kind of see. Now, this starts at the peak. This was in, in January 2014. Remember, in December of 2013, we went over $1,000 and the price exceeded the gold price. And that was the 
that was the top of the market. So I started this deliberately with the very worst timing. So you can see the results. I bought my first Bitcoin. I actually did much better than this because I bought my first Bitcoin in August of 2013 when a little under a hundred dollars, I think it was a $92. And then I bought some at 98 and then uh, I bought, uh, I think I had as much as 40 Bitcoin when, it, when it was down there, just over a hundred dollars, 120 or $130. So that was my investment. Uh, and, but here, if you just invested $500 a month, you can see what happened. Now, if you look, uh, initially, you didn't do very well. Uh, look down there at, uh, uh, eight, let's go to eight, we'll go for a year, go to the 15, 15th, was, what was, what was the 15th, one fifteen. okay. So you have a total investment of $6,500, but look at that, you're down, you've lost 50%. Well, that's kind of hard to get through. You can, how stupid I am. Why am I going to, the hardest thing to do is why am I keep buying this Bitcoin? It just keeps going down on me. But when you understand that it's fundamentally sound money, it's like, oh, this is the opportunity. This is not something that get, you, everybody gets excited when it's going up. And, you know, that's what TA is. I, people, and I'm way I say to, well, if it goes up, it goes up. And if it goes down, it goes down. That's TA. Everybody just, oh, it's going up. <laughs> Uh, guys, when it's going up, when it's up there, up, it's going to go down. You need to think the opposite. So this is make helps you to think the opposite. So here you are. And once in, you've sat through a bond, why don't you sat through it? So look, this thing didn't even work uh, until look, you go for the next year. So let's go with that. Let's just go to January uh, the 16. Now we've got a $12,500 investment. Okay. Now, and look what weird. happened. Oh, I've got a little bit of a profit. But what happens to most people and say, oh, I've been suffering through <laughs> this for so I can finally get my money out because you're not looking at Bitcoin as your money. You're looking at your at fiat US dollars. dollars. So that's what happens. I know so many people that I, you know, I recommend they buy Bitcoin. I gave them Bitcoin. I did this, but they all sell out. And then what happens, well, I said, well, you have, oh, no, I sold out my Bitcoin. <laughs> Uh, guys, I can't help you guys if you don't understand what hodling is. I can't help you. So, but you got you, look. You didn't make very much. You're not doing that great. Okay, I'm not hurting anymore. But but look at what happens when you go to to the. Here we are on the 16th. That was the bottom. Okay, let's go January 2017. Now you're starting to talk a little bit. Look at that. Your total investment is eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. And it's got its worth in dollars about forty thousand dollars. Okay, you more than double your money. Yeah, so you've doubled your. But it, look how long it took you. You didn't. It wasn't buying a pit stop or whatever the name of that and stock. It only, it, and, it, and it only got you to that point because you actually stuck to it. And yeah, you actually were disciplined. When it go down. And your 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 dollar cost. as called. That's a fundamental. The fundamentals. What are the fundamentals again, guys? Inflation. The number one swindle in the history of mankind. Number two, the uh, Social Security, or to put it another way, entitlement programs, any kind of entitlement program. That's the second greatest swindle. And the third one is what? Regulation. Those are the three fundamentals that give Bitcoin its net worth. That's why Bitcoin is sound money. It's immune to those three things, it, okay? It can't be inflated. Uh, it can't, uh, it, you're not entitled to it. You got to work for it and earn it or pay for it. And the third thing is it's not regulated. That's why it's worth so much. So now we go back and let's go look in the history some more. We're at the 17, at eight, oh, now we're, now we're, really eight, now we're talking. Now look at that. My investment of 24,500 has suddenly turned into what? Over, Over half, half a million. million dollars. Wow. But you've still got exactly the same amount of Bitcoin as you had all the way through. And that's how you suffer. That's how you do it. Now we we'll go, let's go to the next year then. Let's just go to, and look, so you're suffering. That's how you suffer through, suffering through a bear market. That's the discipline that you want a bear market. It'll be great if Bitcoin would go right back on down to 14,000. The you risk is it may not. Gobbling it up. So 
here we are at 2019. Now, oh, look at that. We lost we, that year. Look at how much we gave back. Where, where was it the previous year? Uh, okay, oh, yeah. we're 180,000. We so we actually, at one time, we were up how much? 600, 600, yeah, 674,000. So six, yeah, point, right, we were up to 800,000 at one time. Look at that up there, oh, the yeah. 12, 15, or 800,000. Our $800,000 went back to 162,000, okay? So, but as long as you kept hauling. Now, I do recommend that you save, and I'll get into that first, but let's do the hodl. So we're explaining what hodling is. So the whole thing is if you just hodl, 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 if you just hodl, and I took $500 because that was half, less than half of my social security check. So we just keep on doing, doing, it's boring guys, but no, go down to January, 2021 where we are now do we look at the night now though go to not go to the night go to we go every year let's go back let's to the, the 2019 yeah. There. okay yeah as we were down okay let's go to 2020 oh look at that we went back up not to a new peak but we're at four hundred and forty-five thousand dollars. We were up at six hundred before. We're back up by yeah. four. And then we had that March crash, and look at it, it went way down there. But then look at that when it rebounded. Then all of a sudden, what happened? Wow! In October, it was only we were almost at the six hundred thousand. In November, it goes to eight hundred thousand. December, a million dollars, and wow! Look at that in January. That. Is two million basically almost two million dollars, forty two thousand dollars, five hundred dollar investment, and that's disciplined dollar cost averaging. Now, let's say that you you were really not, you didn't know anything about Bitcoin. Okay, you didn't know anything about it. Uh, I didn't know it. I mean, I had heard about it when it before it even was a dollar, but I didn't look into it until August of two thousand thirteen, and then. Boy, I, I didn't hesitate jumping in. Now let's go down and assume that you didn't hear about it and you got the very worst timing. Let's scroll down a little bit more. We'll look at the next time and the next dollar there. So here's the next peak. Now what if you started at, when it went in December of 2017, it went to $20,000. So we started on the 15th. We start dollar cost averaging there. Look at that. So we bought in almost at the very top, at top of the yeah. 2017 run up. Yeah, seventeen thousand six hundred, and let's look at what happened after a year. Oh, look at that! We're we're losing money again. Look at that! So look at that! We invested sixty five hundred dollars, and we lost half of our money again. Oh no, <laughs> disaster! But we're hodling, guys. That's not weathering a bear market. It's That's accumulation. Okay, so now let's go to the next year. <laughs> oh. Here it is, 12, 15. Now we've got, ah, oh, look at that. We just, our, we, our up. nose poked up, up against, uh, up above water again. It took a long time. How long have this taken us? Two years. Two years. Two years. Before you even saw it. But you didn't even, before, yeah, you weren't even, but, but you had the worst time. You came in at the worst. If this is the very top, and I don't know if it's the top or bottom, but this is what happens if you buy at a top. Okay. So we can assume that if you're at a top right now and you still haven't got Bitcoin, you, you you're might, still going to be all right. You yeah. Just you, just, you, gotta, you gotta wait it out. And it may, you know, it may just keep on, you know, some people think it's going to 400,000, a million, you know, Todd Jenks says eventually 10, it, it's, it, it's the problem is not Bitcoin. The problem is your legacy system. The problem is whatever fiat currency you're in. So now let's go look at uh, 12. Okay. We were, so we've got, this is where we right. yeah, as for South let's go the and next year, year 20 last year, 2020. There we are. All right. So we have 18,500. And now that 18,000 doubled. And then of course, January, we have this big, huge pop. And look at that. Now we have $19,000, which is suddenly it's gone almost what, four and a half X. Yeah. But it took two years to do that, guys. That's how you that's how you weather a bear market. You want a bear market. If you don't have a hollow, you don't want this thing to go up. The best thing that can happen to anyone who doesn't have any right now is going to a bear to market. Down. Yeah. And if you've sat through a bear market or two in the in the big and with your Bitcoin, you will start enjoying when it goes down. But 
you also have to, now let's go into uh, saving because that's, that's your hollow, okay? Right. Just hollow it. And for anyone who wants, there's a link to the article in the Right, in the go chat. to the Ugly Old Goat. All these articles are on the Ugly Old Goat, Goat website. Now you can go to go to the article. It's called uh, uh, "Hodl Save Buildup." Okay, that's why I do this stupid little dance because Bitcoin is pretty easy to learn. You just kind of have to get the fundamentals in your DNA, in your head, and understand what sound money is, and then it really becomes pretty darn easy. Um, there you go. We are the standard. Or there's the other one below it. Maybe the better one. We are. We'll do both of them, but I think this is the one. Scroll down and see what this article looks like. Okay. Oh, that's my daughter. <laughs> going, going, you know, it's like, okay, this is what it's all about, folks. I'll teach you to trade, but promise me. You do it in a small way. And if you follow what I teach, you'll do will do just fine. Even if you never make trade never make it trading, you will make it with your hodl, hodl, hodl. Don't ever jeopardize your hodl, guys. So you're you're gonna see that hodl go up. And as it does, occasionally along the way, hey, when that thing pops up and you've made five or ten X, reward yourself. Sell a little bit of it and take your wife out to dinner, upgrade your computer or uh, you know, depending upon the size of your hodl, you know, my wife, goat lady likes big trucks. So she, she wouldn't, and she'll tell me I need a big truck. And so she'll, and, and if market's up, I'll usually accommodate her and she turns out to be right. So uh, I call that savvy. In other words, a lot of people that they only hodl. In fact, I was called out because um, uh, I do because I recommend this. I recommend that you you save, and I call that being savvy. Uh, and it's a, just like hodl is a bastardization of, of the word hold, sav, save is my bastardization of the word savvy, which means if you're a hodler, you are savvy. So because you're savvy, you need to reward yourself because you're savvy. You want to sell when you want something, when you need something, not when you have to have something. Not when, oh, an emergency happens. Oh, a disaster happens. I have to sell my Bitcoin because that's all I have. No, you don't want, first of all, you're probably living beyond your means. So you want to live within your means so you can be hodling. That's number one. Okay. But I've known so many people that, for example, when the Bitcoin sold down uh, after the 2017 uh, rally, we, we went down and down and down. And then in 2018, we actually went from like 6,000 to 3,000. I know a lot of people, something came up and they had to sell a good portion or all or, or a good portion of their Your Bitcoin. Your brother-in-law had to buy that tire. <laughs> yeah, here's a good example. I had a brother-in-law, this one just came out. He, 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 I gave him some Bitcoin. He did some work for us and I bought it on the exchange and I said, look, just put this aside. Don't worry about it. It'll be, you know, just don't worry about it. Just hodl this and you'll, you'll learn Bitcoin. And it was on the Mexican exchange here because he, I didn't, it was a small amount, but, but it turned, to make a long story short, we knew that he had it and we kept, well, yeah, I never touched it. He said, I never, you know, I, I still got the Bitcoin and he lost his cell phone. So he couldn't log into his account. So finally, he was making a deal. He he works for my wife. He does a lot of work for us around. Us. So she was in some business deal with him, and he didn't have any money. He says, okay, well, we know you have your Bitcoin, so you can pay me the Bitcoin we know you have mm. for this. Um, so, so they did. And they spent about two weeks ago. They went in, and they logged in. took them about four hours to log into the account. No Bitcoin. Well, well what happened? He goes, Oh, I had a flat tire. He had a flat <laughs> tire. And so he sold the Bitcoin, the Bitcoin to fix a, a flat tire. I don't know, he needed 50 or 100 bucks. He sold all of his Bitcoin. And now it was, he had, would have been $5,000. And this is what people do. And so you want to sell it when you 
uh, at least are in a profit or breaking even. You yeah, or if you want, you know, splurge. You, you know, life, it's not just hauling Bitcoin. Life is also living. So, you know, we... <clears throat> I mean, this was a great December for anyone who's been hodling. You should have been taking. Yeah, I mean, I bought another. Um, the wife, we just went for a drive in her Jeep. That's a pretty cool Jeep. Isn't That's it? a lovely, lovely car. <laughs> and it's got a winch on it. And it's got. We were. We figured out how to do the winch yesterday, and and uh, we went a little driving up on the hills. I bought her another uh, uh, buggy. You know, so that these guys have already flipped it. So. Uh, but that's what you do. You okay? Let's go look. Let's scroll down. Let's get. So that's the other. Okay. Yeah. Scroll down. Let's see what else this article has. This is the BCA. Yeah, but we don't need to look at that. That just shows you that Bitcoin. Okay, this is. Not, let's go to the go. Go back on on the Google. Just hit your arrows. See what the other article. I think the other article might be better. I have so many articles. We are the standard. Let's see what that one is. Yeah, this is a better article. Let's go down on this one. Okay. Yeah. And scroll down on this one. Okay, there I there. Oh, we can do that one. I am saving. That's probably the article because I wrote I knew I wrote a whole article just about saving. Okay. This is saving. And so what we're doing is I'm hauling. I teach you how to hodl. Then the next thing is you save. And the save is you reward yourself because you have saved. You want, you know, when something comes up, you go ahead and splurge a little bit. There's a, I, I, my articles, I tend to build one on top of another. So one kind of hopefully slides in and let's scroll down and see what else I say down here. Okay. And you're not hoarding. Okay. Uh, hauling is not hoarding. So, and some of the detractors will say that you're hoarding, but you're not. What you're doing is you're saving, you're an entrepreneur and you're just saving something for when something else comes uh, along better. And, uh, uh, but a lot of people think, well, that's hoarding and that's criminal and which implies you should be jailed for holding Bitcoin. Well, that's not the case. So you, you're rewarded for holding Bitcoin and you should be because you're saving for a future time uh, and you're, you're patient, so you're waiting for, hopefully, make another correct decision. So let's go down and see what the decision is. Okay. You might have upgraded your laptop, okay? And it's what it is, okay. Hodling is dynamic, growing mo monetary energy at rest, locked in a box with a private key, waiting to be unleashed at an opportune time by the hodler. Paper dollars in a shoebox is static depreciating monetary energy at rest, rushing headlong towards its intrinsic value of worthlessness, not wise hodl. This is exactly what Michael Saylor was teaching. He says, look, I have this business. We operate with, we have to have a cash reserve for da daily business operations. This reserve is, I'm losing my shirt with holding this reserve. I want to hold my reserve in something that's appreciating. He hasn't shut down his business. He hasn't sold all of his assets to buy to buy Bitcoin. What he's done is put himself and put his business on the Bitcoin standard. And that's what you need to do. That's what we all need to do. So there it is. Hodling is dynamic growing monetary energy at rest. Locked in a box with a private key, waiting to be unleashed at an opportune time by the hodler. Whereas if you're saving dollars, your legacy accounts, it's, you're saving dollars in this shoebox and it's static. And now you might be a little less than static if you're holding stocks or something like that, but then you're still in the legacy system where you're being highly regulated. That's another topic. Okay, but we're a growing economy uh, <clears throat> and we are growing in the way we see fit, not the way some socialists think the, the economy ought to go. We're the ones that we make our own decisions. We're our own money. And we're our own money. We make our own decisions for our family and for the people we love around us. So that's what it's all about. That's saving. So scroll down. Let's read some more. Okay. We have Bitcoin Pharisees. And I call that they're the new way. This was years ago. They, they're pretty well disappeared now. But there was a bunch of new wave of Bitcoiners that 
you know, they, and they would, would say, oh, we're altruistic. We're going to bank the unbanked and we're going to save the world. And that's not what, you know, and they would scam, say, oh, we got this better idea than Bitcoin. And so they'd get your Bitcoin for their whatever scammy idea was. And so we basically have to call them out for who they are. And I call them Bitcoin Pharisees. So let's scroll down. And they haven't quite disappeared yet. They've just yeah, like they're different still, ways they're still out there, still out there. Okay, and as hollers, we must be men and do the same. And we call these snakes, snakes. And so I call, we call uh, these wannabe big, uh, Bitcoin movements as uh, Pharisees and snakes and vipers and evil. <laughs> okay. And the new Bitcoiners are entrepreneurs. And that's going to be, the, and I'm just what I wrote about the, the fourth wave is the existing successful entrepreneurs, new upcoming entrepreneurs who just want to be, maybe you're working for somebody, but it's a boy, I'd like to have my own business someday, or at least I want to manage my own funds. And uh, that is, uh, as you, as su successful entrepreneurs, it's going to, you're going to be much more likely to succeed if you're doing your business, at least holding your assets in something that's appreciating. And so that's what saving is about. And as that happens, it's wise to reward yourself because hey you were prudent if you're prudent you need to save so. which is also part of money management because at any time when when your stack grows in dollar value you're gonna increase your percentage that you're holding in bitcoin so you can sort of scale back and take out some of the money to to actually treat yourself and still be within the confines of your money management okay so let's go down some more all right yeah, and so as we tend to be responsible for our own wealth, and we're like shining stars to like-minded entrepreneurs, I have a much easier uh, time explaining Bitcoin to uh, fellow entrepreneurs than I do just the average person off the street, because they understand all the risks that are involved when you're in business. And so when they wake up to the idea of what Bitcoin, the need that it meets, they're much more responsible, and that's what that's why. Uh, what Michael Saylor is doing is is waking up so many other people. It is a very that's why you do have a fundamental uh, structure change in Bitcoin right now. It, we're in new highs. There's no reason to think that this is anything but the beginning of a huge new bull wave. And people that are very well studied in, in the back and I'm not. I don't claim to know the back end of Bitcoin and uh, all these you know all, measuring all this these. Uh, on-chain transactions and so forth, but there's some very good fundamentalists that are out there. Willie Wu is probably one of the best, uh, and and you know they have these these models. What well, they may or may not come true, we don't know. It's it is a speculation. Look, uh, Bitcoin is volatile. It's not. It, it is a wise speculation. It is not. In, it's not. In, it's not something you put everything into. You put Definitely do not make a Reddit YOLO and throw it. Yeah, you entire. don't throw everything into Bitcoin thinking you're going to get rich tomorrow. That's not the way it works. And, and that's never the way things work. And if, if you're in that mindset, I'm just talking past you anyway. You probably will never get the message. So, and like I say, we kind of experienced the fruitlessness of persuading others to the Bitcoin vision until they are ready to make a commitment. So we just kind of wait, I, you know, I used to do that and it's just, I found out a waste of time and energy. The best way I can do it is show you by example, the best way I can do is here's the results of dollar cost averaging. It doesn't matter when you start buying Bitcoin, you just need to make that commitment and start doing it. It's not gonna be something, uh, you, are you gonna have good timing? Maybe, but most likely not, most people don't. It's gonna be more luck than anything. Yeah. So, I mean, if you happen to catch a bottom, and then here's a great article. This was done by uh, uh, the five pillars of, pillars of Bitcoin. That's this is by Tyler Andreas, Jenks. Uh, that's Tyler Jenks. Is, uh, old. Oh, no, that's age, isn't it? No, no, it's uh, Tyler Jenks. Right. Yeah, Tyler Jenks. No, 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 no. Yeah, Tyler Jenks wrote this. And so uh, that's what I teach. Uh, 
Uh, I, it's a hyperwave theory. Now he taught the technical side, but I teach hy hyperwave from the fun fundamental side, but so did Tyler. He said there's five different uh, fundamentals that make it unique and that's unconfiscatable, it's permissions, permissionless value transfer. And third, it provides anonymity. Uh, I think that three should probably be where two is and two should be where three is. Bitcoin is fungal, which is true, it's decentralized, but you really, the top three is it's unconfiscatable. It's uh, permissionless. Uh, permissionless. And uh, it's pseudonymous it's slash just, yeah, anonymous. Yeah, those are the three big ones. Okay. But the most important one is it can't be confiscated. And that is also what makes it the asset of last resort. You know, just ask yourself, what can be taken from you? And when I ask somebody that, they start thinking, say, well, you know, oh, they can take away my car, my house. There isn't much they can't take they away. Can take away the your the they can take away your family. They can take everything away. They can from take you away from your yep. family. They can take, they can take, yeah, they can throw you in jail, but they cannot take your Bitcoin so long as you're the one that owns the key. And that's why it's the asset of last resort. That's why it's ultimately uh, sound money. And that's why we really need to, you know, we'll be building, I think it's important we build more and more networks where we watch each other's backs. We won't have your respected Bitcoiners with integrity in jurisdictions where they've been per persecuted and doing a productive thing. And this is basically what BitMEX is under right now. And yet they're being persecuted. If they could, they would be shut down. If they could, they would throw all of these guys in jail and throw away the key. And they're trying to. And they're the trying to, but they, they can't. And so guys, this we got to, you know, we got to really support them. And I'm just, I'm so disappointed because there's just nobody's out there uh, beating this drum that I'm aware of. Is anybody beating this drum? I haven't, I haven't seen anyone who has a voice. And I, that's activated. very disappointing to me because I say, guys, if, if we don't deserve Bitcoin, if we won't stand up for these guys, we don't deserve it. It's that simple. So, all right. So let's go look at, um, and then the last thing to do is build up. And building is it doesn't matter. You don't have to build on Bitcoin. Uh, now, my builder is I started a new business. I started this website. I started Ugly Old Goat. But I had another business and I still have that business. Uh, and we're starting another business here. We want to develop a, 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 I was able to invest in the equipment for a top notch uh, production uh, studio. Yeah, a production studio. I can't produce, I'm not at the, Big, I mean, I'm known in the big, but I'm not, I, I'm not good at doing these videos or anything like that. So I, I don't even want to, I just want to give other, you know, newbies some, a chance. To, I know they can get this out. I know they have some things to say. If I can perform that platform, if I can give you other entrepreneurs, here's, you know, this is my little contribution back to Bitcoin. And so you can do it that way. But the most important thing is you want to, Keep your wealth. Stay independent. Doesn't matter what you do. If you work for somebody, uh, Victor Villacana, he works for a major company here in Mexico. Loves his job. Loves the family. He works for. Has no intention of ever leaving his job. That's great. Uh, and if you do have a business, if you have a hot dog stand, or you have a car wash, or if you're a doctor or a lawyer, just be the very best that you are at it. And have a good rep. Build your hodl, and protect yourself. If you're vulnerable and only have your assets in in your home in the United States and in a retirement account, you need to get into Bitcoin. So, you know, that's what's going to be able to, to, to bail you out when the shit hits the fan or bail somebody else out if the shit hits their fan, because that, that's basically, you know, one of the reasons I want to stay here close to my, the border is I have family in the United States and I want them, if they need to get out, uh, I'm here for them, and I'm I'm here for all of our members. Uh, you know, they if you subscribe, uh, you have an open invitation to come down here and visit us. Hopefully, we'll be kind of making this more like a Bitcoin hostel or something. You can either live with us or or you know stay in the local uh, stay in the lovely places so, around. Yeah, and and uh, we'll just see what happens. So that that's what building is. So those are three things that I teach. And now the next big thing that's coming. Let's go to how to uh, primer on on hedging because that's really 
that's where we are now. The markets uh, changed this year, and I think you're going to have more, more, and more. Uh, yeah. That, okay. This was written in 2019, and actually, I wrote it uh, as the market back then in that, that summer it went into a contango and i said look this market is no longer a a good speculative vehicle so uh, it's a great a, hedging vehicle since this is open to the public you might want to explain what contango is for anyone who doesn't know well you know, okay contango yeah i'm not going to because that's too deep for me they, they can read up on it and right. but contango is basically when the futures markets are over the spot market exactly when and backwardization is if it's but but basically when that happens is and that happened here with this rise from 20 to forty thousand, uh and what happens is that's no longer a good speculative market, but it's a great hedger's market. Hedgers need, the markets, futures markets are created to uh, offset risk. In particular, if you're a miner or in any business, if you're in business and you're using Bitcoin as a bank, you you need to hedge yourself because you're, you've got dollar transactions and Bitcoin transactions and you're trying to lock in that profit. You, you don't care so much what Bitcoin does, you're, you're playing the spread. And uh, for example, when we popped up that year, which was in the summer of 2019, uh, Bitcoiners could sell, uh, miners could sell their Bitcoin at a huge premium and they can lock in their profits for the year just by selling on the futures market, whether the market went up or down, by selling just a small portion of their production. So even if the market goes up, they still win. They just don't win as much. Or if it goes down, they 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 protect them, them themselves and locked in. So they and so I knew at that time, Bitcoin was going to be secure because the mining operations were going to be secure for at least six months. That's what's happening now too in Bitcoin. With the the way the Bitcoin market is operating now with such premium, uh, the miners are able to lock in uh, some. A you price, know, which a, is yeah, a couple a of thousand dollars over and, the spot price. Right. So, and that's very, very, and, and what it does is it penalizes speculators. So if you're buying Bitcoin now in a speculation uh, and buying futures, you're paying a premium. So it's kind of like you're, 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 you're coming out of the box almost with a net loss because of that premium. So uh, you just need to understand those are the market mechanisms mechanisms and fundamentals and so and we we reached the same thing uh uh you can keep on going down it's a godsend this is an article that you we're not going to go to there but this is the article that that, that inspired me to write Th that explains contango and backward the contango is a godsend for miners and a curse for speculators it explains how the market works and why this is so this is the same thing now the contango with it we're in, the new contract highs, it's a godsend for the miners. It's really a curse for the speculators, not for the hodlers. We're doing great. <laughs> we're happy with it. We're we all happy with it. But if you're out there speculating, thinking it's going up, it's a risky business now. It's not the, you know, and so I'm looking for other things to do. You know, I think, and that's why I say you're going to see more and more alternatives develop. Like right now, I, I don't mind buying a little gold. Uh, with my a uh, Bitcoin uh, or on and using it, I don't even have to sell the Bitcoin. I can use it as collateral and take a speculative uh, position on gold. So that that's what I see developing more and more of in the this year, next, in the coming decade. That you're going to see more and more things that you're going to be able to hedge yourself. Uh, uh, and participate in because you're a Bitcoin hold holler. So scroll down some more, and we'll go through this. Uh, there it says the I am saving, which went through. We are the standard. Uh, we also looked at that. And, and there, oh, this is the, the one you should always read, how to become a Bitcoin millionaire. This is it explains social security and why it's, and it just shows dollar cost averaging. And it shows you if you take your social security, you take it and buy Bitcoin and the long run is that's what's going to bail you out. So don't worry about it. You don't need to worry about trading Bitcoin or speculating until you have the hodl. But once you have your hodl, okay. And now that you understand what saving saving means, being a savvy Bitcoin investor, okay. And then hodling, and that's build another business. You're now ready for 
new strategies and there's going to be new strategies i think developing this year so uh uh that's what i outlined here this was just a primer and what's going to develop is that's kind of what we work on and within the the uh uh, our telegram group, because we don't really know uh, what the opportunities are, but there's going to be opportunities that uh, are there for you uh, uh, if you have a hodl. And here I get blasted by somebody because he said I was recommending selling short Bitcoin. Guys, I have never recommended selling short Bitcoin, but you're silly if you don't hedge it, hedge it or take a pro reward yourself. And if you scroll down, here's the example. I think I have my my buy Lam Lambo example down here. This is a bit, bit, scroll down some more. All right. And I think that's it. There it is. Okay. <laughs> I tweeted this out. And this is, you buy, you know, people, the joke is, once you make a fortune in Bitcoin, you, you can buy a Lambo. Lambo with, well, I've never bought a Lambo and I don't ever, ever want a Lambo, but I get, I have these buggies. <laughs> and, but the first time we did this, the Bitcoin lady, we were hodlers and the Bitcoin lady wanted, uh, uh, what was it? The, uh, Raptor. Raptor. Raptor truck, Ford Raptor. And they just came out. Oh, I want a Ford Raptor. So she bought her Raptor up there at point A. And, uh, it costs not very many Bitcoin because Bitcoin was, I don't know, $20,000 or close to it then. And so it maybe cost us three, three or four Bitcoins. <laughs> and then she decided she only kept it for a year, basically got it for free and then traded it in for a bunch of equipment, which at the time was about 42 Bitcoin. So we, she basically turned four Bitcoin into 42 because the market went down <laughs> and she was able to trade her. She made, <clears throat> she made money coming and going. So scroll down and we'll see. Yeah. <clears throat> It's a simply, my point is simply this, you sell Bitcoin when something better comes along and not when you're forced to sell due to need. And nothing has ever come along better for me than the goat lady. I don't need this stuff, but she does. And you know what? And when she's happy, I'm happy. And what she wants, she gets. And I thought it was terrible to buy that Raptor, but it turned out to be far better than owning Bitcoin because she had that Raptor for a year and then she traded it for, I don't know, a bunch of equipment for nothing. And, and so, and like I say, the demands of a good wife and family are the perfect balance for a successful trader or a successful hodler. And while it might be a great time to sell Bitcoin, it's never a good time to go net short. So you never, you only sell a portion of your hodl and, uh, and you don't sell any of it till you're comfortable with, with the hodl that you have. And, uh, and it's, it's prudent rather than selling. If you do want to sell, you can actually sell on the futures market and hedge yourself that way. Uh, and, reduce the risk of high prices. And I give an example here of what happens if you, hit, if you let's say you have a hodl of 10 Bitcoin, and we'll just go through this example, and you decide, well, okay, I'm going to sell, uh, uh, I'm going to sell, okay, by, okay. Okay, by, let's say you had 20% of your tip Bitcoin hodl. This is an example I gave with the December futures at 12,000. Let's examine what happens if the price continues to rise and doubles to 24,000. Well, if that happens, uh, if the position is fully covered and you're not leveraged, there's an exchange risk of two Bitcoin. All you can lose is the two Bitcoin you put in the exchange. However, absent the exchange risk, the position is fully covered and at expiration, your position will be worth $24,000. At $24,000, your equity will be reduced by Bitcoin, but your dollar value of your HODL is the same. If not more. And it's less, it's gonna be less. Your dollar value is gonna be, be uh, oh, you can be, con yeah, you're, 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 <laughs> 
you're doubling the the hodl value. Right. You basically, your hodls continued to go on up, but you've only lost a bitcoin to do it. So you, okay. so if your remaining eight bitcoin, your hodl is worth one hundred and ninety-two thousand plus the one bitcoin equity for a total of two hundred sixteen thousand dollars. So in other words, you get up ten percent of your hodl as an insurance premium against a market to decline. Now let's see if it meanders on down and the the hedge the you know, market goes down on you, and it goes down to three thousand dollars, which it did. Uh, now the remaining eight Bitcoin is worth twenty four thousand plus the twenty four thousand equity in your futures position, and now you just made eight Bitcoin. So it's just hedged twenty percent of your Bitcoin. Your hodl is now eight Bitcoin plus another eight Bitcoin on your hedge, resulting in a total of sixteen Bitcoin compared with the starting of ten. Now. Your net worth, the dollar price has actually gone down, but your hodl, and that's what you're thinking. You got to think of your hodl. You're not thinking about dollars anymore. You, you want to increase your hodl. You don't want to increase exactly. your dollars, or you want to at least break even. I don't really build a hodl anymore because I've got my hodl. So as I trade, I basically am spending it or looking for other things to do because I'm operating off my hodl. Your hodl is your equity it is your base it is where you're coming to so you can make a uh, wise trading decision which is the lesson that ugly teaches for anyone who wants to be a trader trade your equity Tra not. we trade equity trading we're not trading to get rich in the market now as it turns out you can become very rich through equity trading you know i've been able to consistently turn a very small amount of bitcoin into a very large amount of bitcoin every year now, the, when I first did it, the reason I started this, I started this in 2018. I was in the top 10 BitMEX trading, tra no no notational. notational traders in 2017. And 2018, I just couldn't trade worth a damn. I, I didn't lose anything. I was breaking, I, breaking even, losing a little bit. But I just, you know what, I'm getting out. And I start, that's when I started writing. That's when I wrote that first article on how to to have the same results as a professional trader. And then I decided in, in that fall to start trading again. And, and I that year, I thought it was going to be my first year where I didn't make money trading Bitcoin. But it turned out I took two Bitcoin and made, took two, 22 out and turned out to be a very good year. And then I've had two very good years since then with a very small amount of, of Bitcoin. This year, I'm down two Bitcoin. I because I made took 47 out last year. I put two in. I lost. I've lost that almost all of it. <laughs> so uh, I'm basically even yeah, if I make two Bitcoin this year. Now, if I, I make two Bitcoin this year, I'm just at break even. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see what. what if I'll be, but I'm not trading actively, guys. I don't. I'm not comfortable with this market. To be a successful trader, you need to have discipline. You need to have patience, and you have to have the ability to turn the, pull the trigger. Okay, and uh, and I think there's just other opportunities, and I think one of the ways that I'm looking into is I'm looking into other ways of hedging my hodl, and one of these is I think you can use Bitcoin as collateral for other assets. And now one of those would be what we were talking about. I think with Galilee, one of our members is is to buy the the stuff. What's the name of Michael Saylor's company? Uh, that was a micro strategy. Yeah, micro strategy. Micro strategy. I mean, it was not possible if you have Bitcoin and find an exchange where you could buy those the st stocks that people have a bit. The, the thing about Bitcoin is that this, the companies that have a Bitcoin hodl, it's going to be nearly impossible. They may not go up, but it's going to be really hard to short them. Yeah, I mean, they 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 gain the same security as an individual hodler in that sense. And so I was looking, but there's really nothing available to do that. But there are, you can buy certain stocks and you can trade certain things. And one of the things because of what's going on fundamentally is I think that gold still, I, I'm not down on gold. I think gold is still fundamentally, it's still also sound money. Gold's been around for 5,000 years. Uh, it's not going to go away and not be money. Uh, or store of value, it's going to continue to be, uh, you know, the, the verdict is still out on Bitcoin, even though I'm a big hodler, and I think it has more potential. And I think it's better than gold for the reasons that I outlined. Uh, it's that's still a speculation. And we have so far to go with it. 
you don't want to have all you, you don't want to have all of your assets in in bitcoin you want to have uh it's like michael saylor says i have it because fuck them they can take everything but they can't get to my bitcoin i can go somewhere and start all over again in another jurisdiction and that's what the value is and so it, you know that's what i'm hopefully you're you're getting out of this and uh that you shouldn't be looking at what it's worth in terms of other currency or what you can necessarily do with it just know that you're 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 securing yourself against a system that is inherently corrupt by stepping out and buying bitcoin yeah yeah and everybody's going to be and you remember everybody that in bitcoin they're all individuals we all think differently we don't agree on Many, much many of anything things. we don't have to you know what we do agree on is we understand the value of bitcoin and that's how we can you know it's a way of, of peacefully uh exchanging you know if you can't peacefully exchange or with when i you know, look i think we're just it's becoming evident to me we're just living in a big prison system i think it was who was that guy the crazy guy no, not that crazy but uh, <laughs> uh prison planet um info wars uh Alex Jones. Alex Jones, yeah. I mean, and, he he he's turned out on many things not to be crazy at all. Yeah, there's a lot of the things that people were laughing at him for in the nineties that but, have turned out to be completely true. Right, and we, I, you know, I was physically in prison, and uh, I was, uh, you know, I was there. I took full responsibility for my wrongdoing. Uh, you know, I had my, they call it pre-sentence, but PSI, you know, I could go around, you know, about 60 to 80% of the people in the prison system now are snitches because that's the way they built the system. The first guy to roll gets five or 10 years and the, the guy you don't roll, you're the minor player, but you get the life sentence, you know, uh, plus, you know, that that's just the way it works. So uh, a lot of the, the uh, uh, gangbangers are, are pay, the smaller ones, the, particularly like motorcycle gangs and stuff like that, all the different gangs within prison, you know, I was a stand up because I, here's my PSI, you know, I'm, I'm, I guess they call it like, uh, what, not a shot caller, but Eddie, you here? I'm here. Uh, what do they call that when you're the leader of the gang and they enhance your sentence for that? You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Yeah. They have a name for it. Anyway. So anyway, I, I was, you know, uh, I forgot they have a name for it, but I can't remember. But at any rate, you know, I, I would stand up. I could meet with anybody, you know, and I was an individual and I, you know, if I had a problem with a certain group or, or usually it was an individual, but I knew they were usually a member of a gang. I could go eyeball to eyeball with the, the shot color of that gang and, you know, always work things out or, you know, Sometimes I had to go eyeball to eyeball, you know, and sometimes they were bigger than me, you know, and I remember I had a problem with a rooster once. I, you know, rooster, you, you got a misunderstanding, but you know what, if you want to go at it, you know, you'll probably, you know, we can go at it right now. You're getting, you know, you might beat the shit out of me, but I'm going to get my licks in because I was in pretty good shape then too. And, and, uh, I said, but we're both going to the hole and we, you're going to get rock and rolled. And so that settled it, you know, that, but that's the whole thing. You, 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 you have to be able to communicate with your enemies. And that's what, what, uh, Bitcoin does too. <laughs> if you don't have a free trade, then armies follow guys. And, uh, that that's what Bitcoin provides us with, an, with the avenue for that free trade. So it is, uh, uh, now that we live in almost a prison planet, and I like that term that I think it was Alex Jones came up with, because yeah. that's kind of what we're in right now. And so we all have to be making alliances within this prison planet so we can avoid uh, the people and the powers that have the guns. And uh, and Bitcoiners are particularly good at that. Yeah. So, all right. Any other questions? I think I I've think pretty outlined it. Yeah, I think we've uh, covered most of Just it. Just don't um, get all wrapped up in this, uh, in the latest speculative bubble, because they're going to come and go. I mean, it's going to, they're going to be there. We, you know, it happens in Bitcoin. It's, uh, you know, I'm in gold right now because it is relatively quiet, although it's, they're mixing it up quite a bit, which I think lends its support because gold does tend to get a little volatile before it reverses. But uh, uh, I would, you know, 
don't get caught up in this stuff and certainly don't think you're going, you're going to probably end up with a lot of egg in your face. If, if you think you're going to make it, uh, uh, if you you don't want to control the market guys you and want to be you want to too. be in there you want to be the as a trader you want to be a sniper you want to be able to and you want to be able to get an out in and out quickly you don't want to ha have a large position in any particular market uh, you want to catch the trends and number one thing is you limit your risk just don't you know don't risk more than 5% of your HODL. If you're exactly. trading, it doesn't matter what it is. Don't risk more than that. And then as you can, uh, uh, and if you're lose, mo most people they'll double down or they're, you don't, you do the opposite. You trade less, you start, and people have seen me do that. They can't believe it. I said, yeah, I took 32 Bitcoin out of the market. And then I started trading the next year with, a little over half a Bitcoin. What is it you say? There's a plenty of plenty of large traders. Yeah, large. Yeah, all the you know, say there's a few small traders become large traders, and uh, but there's a lot of large traders that become small traders. But the wise large trader chooses to become a small trader again, and so I've chosen countless times over and over again to become a small trader again. And then it's just amazing how quickly, you know, once you in, but to, and I, I do have my own techniques. Everybody has their own techniques or swing traders. I'm a position trader. I'm a big believer. Uh, we can go to the website if you want. And I do have just make a few books that I recommend. And number one is I recommend the art of execution. And that is written uh, by a guy that uh, managed hedge funds. Let's go recommend it. There you go. I do recommend, there it is, The Art of Execution, and that's written by Lee Freeman Shore. That's probably the best book out there that I've read. I've read all, I've, I used to have a huge library of all, I bought all the technical systems. I'm aware of 90% of the, the TA out there, and not the ones that emerged the last 10 or 20 years, but most of them emerged before that. But that's a great book. This guy, uh, was not a trader himself. He just simply managed funds and would hand funds out billions and billions to other fund managers. So he could see who the successful ones were. And then he did an analysis of why they were successful. And they all seemed to have certain traits in common. Uh, and that was all on, on they, they didn't stay with the loser, but they knew how to stay with the winner. The other thing they learned to do was what, what I didn't know. I always had done it, but they call it trimming. I just as a matter of as if you have a winning trade, reward yourself. That's saving. That's take them off. Take them off. The other one that's just really great uh, book. I don't know who that picture is next to him, but the how to make the stock market make money for you up there. That one by Ted Warren. Now this guy, I don't know. We need to update that because that's that picture's not that's not him. That's somebody else. Mm. But uh, Ted Warren, he's dead, but but he had a sixth grade education. But his his uh, uh, view of the market was so simple and so accurate that basically he teaches you uh, how to position yourself in quiet markets and how to recognize accumulation and how to recognize distribution. Uh, and fitting into this is another one that I recommend. And that's a hyperwave, which was by Ty Tyler Jenks. Uh, actually, it was edited. He this was written after he passed on. And, but uh, and this outlines what Tyler did is he took and I talked to him about it. Yeah, I got the original idea is Ted was based on Ted Warren, and he was really good at, at, at called Consensio and knows all the different patterns uh, and sequences of moving averages and he recognized what was what, what was a hyperwave uh, and he does it from a technical point of view I, I i approach it from more of a fundamental said so i assume that bitcoin is a hyperwave and that's why we accumulate it we don't wait for a breakout to buy it we mm. accumulate it during the bear market but and then socrates who was also on our working man's Bitcoin cruise, he did a great job of just giving a very concise, uh, but uh, uh, total overview of, of TA trading, which does help you on timing. 
Uh, and so that that book is just ten dollars, very much worthwhile. These other two books are more. I think the Art of Execution is ten bucks on Kindle. The hard, how to make the stock market make for you is out of print. I think you might have to pay it quite a bit to get it. I think you can download it though. I'm not sure. I think. All right, I'm pretty sure that. And then the, Google will find yeah, it. and then and then we yeah you can hit these links and see if they're available. Then Tone Bays, he's got uh, his. Uh, uh, he's got a great course. I, I, you can go to his website. That's his indicator, but he actually has a course that's free. There it is, a technical analysis that, and he's it's a, guys. This stuff is all free. Uh, you know, I've spent thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years, uh, and he's teaching his stuff that that is available free. Uh, for, you know, if you just dig it out and all of my stuff is free, you don't need to be a subscriber to what I'm doing. Tone does this because he loves Bitcoin because he loves what he's doing. That's what I'm doing it for. I'm not, you know, I'm not here because I'm a YouTube star or know what I'm doing because I don't, I do know a little bit. I don't, I know how to trade and I can show, I've, I've shown that, you know, and that's why I publish my trades, but here's Tone's, uh, he has all kinds of workshops, but he has a free, uh, free one. Let's see. Learn trading. Go up there. Learn awesome. trading. Guys, if you go to this, this is free. Then cost you a thing. And he's got other, uh, all kinds of programs in there that you can, you can, and I can't believe when I were looking at it, he's got my articles <laughs> up there. <laughs> I'm very, thank you, Don. I, I didn't even know this existed until a couple <laughs> months ago. And I said, this is incredible. So, uh, and so I, you know, all the stuff that we're offering is free. Okay. But if you don't follow money management, you're not going to succeed. I don't care what system you have. And, you know, we, I can tell you this over and over again. I mean, I know some very astute traders, guys that I, you know, a lot love personally, good guys know more about this Bitcoin than I do. Better TA guys, better fundamentalists. And yet, you lose that money management aspect. It's the only thing that can ruin you. It's okay to get wrecked. Yeah, it it's okay will. to be wrong, but, but money management will keep you from getting ruined. And as long as you don't get ruined, you can keep on playing the game. And as long as you can play the game, uh, it, you'll figure out, wow, you don't need a whole lot to be very successful. And that's sort of my art is I can take a little bit and make a lot. And, uh, I have yet, I, the goat lady seems to have a lot, but she can't, she hasn't learned to make it bigger yet. So I'm, uh, but I'm not That's good correct. at that myself. I mean, I'm, there, there's a big difference between managing a large firm and being a little uh, uh, sniper like I am. So, but there is a reason that this is the first point that Tom makes on his website as well. If you haven't got money management down, you are going to wreck yourself. Yeah. You're going to ruin, uh, you're, you're going to ruin yourself. Yeah by putting too much on the line, over leveraging yourself and end up not being able to play the game. Nobody knows where the market's going. People ask where, when, when they ask me, where's the market going? You haven't read my stuff. Cause I don't have any idea. You don't have any idea. Nobody knows where the market's going. So we trade accordingly, which is really a hard thing to do because particularly if you get into T, Oh, I know I see this pattern. And I, you know, you, yeah. <laughs> so it will only work until it doesn't. Yeah. It works until it doesn't. And then boy, that's the one that you, you know, you put too much on. And, and if, as long as you avoid that kind of a risk, uh, you'll, you'll be okay. But so many people like say that, you know, you know, they had a hodl and for, Oh, I can take a little bit off. Don't sell your hodl. Just reward yourself. And, Keep hodling or or hold your hodl. And I mean, I've, I've had a bigger hodl than I have now. That is to the point of sticking with a winner. You're winning if you're hodling and you've made money. So don't go and take it all out, but treat yourself. All right. Anybody got questions from the group? Is there anybody that wanted to come in from our group? Because we have a great group and they're kind of taking over. I don't even... Uh, I need to just start paying them because they're the, <laughs> they're the ones that are teaching each other. I'm not teaching. I, I'm, everything I, you know, everything I teach guys is already on the website. You don't need to subscribe to my service. So, so ugly old goat, you can find all the recommended readings and links to all the 
So and tonemaze.com for the trading. Yeah, okay. And there's a few little questions here. Let's, um, are you going to the Michael Saylor event early February? I am. I don't know the information. On it. Yeah, I'm going to look into it. I would like to go. I've heard it's early February, but if somebody has a link, I'll have to look up the link. I would really like to go because I do think I, you know, I respect the guy. I think he's on the right track and I really want to see what he's up to. I really, because, you know, there's some stuff. Uh, cause I'm on the same wavelength guys. I mean, this is it. This is, this is what I wrote about. I said, this is what I wrote about when, when, uh, at the end confiscation, but the, our working man's Bitcoin crew, there's two kinds of entrepreneurs. There's those with Bitcoin and those without, and he's saying the same thing. Hey guys, you're in business. You're either going to use Bitcoin or not, yeah. and you're going to lose out if you don't. And the sooner, the better. And that's why people are saying, well, this, you know, will this thing just keep on going and going and going up to a, a new uh, who knows how high it could. I mean, there's nothing that rules out 40,000, 100,000, 200,000. I'm sorry, if you read some of these, you know, I'm almost afraid to say it because nothing makes any sense anymore, guys. Bitcoin's the only thing that's going to give you any kind of sense of, of what's going on. Well, the craziness you're seeing in this uh, GameStop now, mm. you're going to see that happen over and over and over again in more and more places. You're going to see a crackdown. Of more tr People are going to lose their shirt and they're going to demand government action. And then the government is going to respond to that and with more and more tyranny. And at what point does it finally break loose? I mean, uh, in the long run, it will break loose. And Tone taught me that too. You know, Tone comes, his background, his, he didn't, he wasn't born in the Soviet Union, but his parents were, and they escaped it. And so that's one of the things that they celebrate. They're leaving the Soviet Union as much as, as their religious holidays. And I respect that. And, but he also has pointed out that uh, as they inflate the they're not going to be able to pay their armies. It's the fall came from Rome came because they the the uh, Roman government was paying people their their armies in worthless currency, and so when that happened, the armies just turned around and said, "Okay, we're we, the we, we, you know <laughs> we've got the guns and we're going to take what you guys didn't legitimately give us," and that's what's happening here. So these people that that, uh, you know, are uh, thinking they're in control uh, may quickly find out that they're not so much in control. And more and more, I think those that Bitcoin hollers, you're going to find yourself more and more in a position of genuine real power. Uh, and by that, I don't mean a power where you have to be armed, but an economic power. And that's, that's, that's where and you want to Economic power to a certain extent is one of the most powerful things we have right now. So it is very important. You know, if you're, if you think that you're, you know, if you've taken care of your family, you've taken care of yourself, if you have all of your assets in your home and your retirement account, I, I, I not saying you got, oh, so bail out of your retirement income and put it all into Bitcoin, but take, just Make sure figure out a way to take 15% of that and get it into Bitcoin. That's prudent. You're, you're not prudent if you don't do it. So. And then there's, a question about what about fixed dollars versus fixed Bitcoin dollar cost averaging? So let's say you're buying instead of, of going by the dollar amount, you're going by the point buying one point one Bitcoin every time the dollar cost averaging. So it's sort well, of you can. The problem with that is uh, because Bitcoin fluctuates so much, your budget may not accommodate may not ac accommodate that you need to budget what you, you know and, and your your budget may accommodate more if, you know and it may sometimes accommodate less and you may get to the point hey i've hodled this i do have to sell something you know maybe somebody in your family has covid and you have an emergency you need to get some emergency care or something or something comes up so you just you you don't know uh I mean, for my, for me personally, it, it seems like turning things on its head, and especially un, it's unnecessary to do it at the end of the day. If you're looking well, at well, the dollar cost averaging that you've already done, yeah, if dollar that wouldn't be dollar cost averaging. No, anyway, it would that be would be Bitcoin, Bitcoin, cost Bitcoin cost averaging. So and, in in my head, it, it puts it puts it out of whack. That what I do kind of recommend and have always recommended is 
you know, figure out where you're at, make a sizable initial purchase. Okay. If nothing, if you don't have any Bitcoin, well, I don't know. This thing's going to go to, you know, it's going to go to a hundred thousand now, or it's going to, you know, well, I don't know where it's going to go. So, and, and neither do you. So, you know, make the commitment, maybe, you know, make, make a 5% commitment of your net worth, liquidate yourself and buy, just close your eyes and buy, buy, it. you know, say if you have a net worth of a million dollars, you know, buy $50,000 worth, but buy at least a Bitcoin. Right? Mm or two and, and then dollar cost average for that. Uh, but make that initial purchase uh, and then dollar cost average. And hopefully if you, you know, I had people that never got around to making that initial purchase. And this year, you know, I recommended it all the way from 10,000 down to under 4,000, all the way back up to 10,000. And, but nobody was too interested until it popped up to 30,000. And now everybody, Oh, you know, and, you know, we did do, I have paid some people that uh, just because, you know, I had some uh, doctor here that was very, Andy C was very sick, my goat leader was very sick with uh, COVID. COVID. And, you know, they really worked, gave us the correct advice and we did all the right things. And so I, I just, and they, there's a socialized system down here you have to work for the the government hospitals but you can have a private hospital and so i you know i i, I tipped my doctor with a nice little bonus you know and uh, because he didn't buy he wanted to buy bitcoin and just never did and so here i said here's your start so and he you know he i think he already had plans for it because he you know i said yeah and i've taught him he there was a piece of machinery that he wanted to buy that you know i said well that's fine yeah that because you you know, he can get this he, the same surgery that they a and they have some personal health problems and they do some surgery that with, takes a delicate machine. I mean, they, one of these things that they go into your back and I don't know what, it, what they do, but so he bought that machine, but he figures, you know, he can pay for that machine within, uh, you know, Six, six or eight months, you know, because he has enough patients that really need the same care. So that's, that's a wise thing to hodl for, you know, you hodl. So, you know, he's not out there uh, buying a, a, a new truck for his wife. Mm. And, and that was, that's what they were considering. And then they said, well, and I'm he's the building. Type, yeah, he's building, he's got Bitcoin instead. And hopefully within a few years, he'll be able to buy a new truck and it won't even be a burden. So yeah, exactly. that, you might that's be able to buy a whole hospital. <laughs> it all goes well. All um, right. Uh, there is one last one, which is Hurley asking, what do you think about hobby mining Bitcoin? In many ways, it's a form of dollar cost average. Yeah, I mean, uh, we were did it here. It's very noisy. We had, a, we had the neighbors complain. We actually, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you support the network that way. That's there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, don't expect to make money from it. Now we have some members that are mining, and I need to get them on, so we because I really don't know that much about it, but I do think uh, it, that's an important part running your full node that we do have a full node. I don't use it because I'm, I'm just not that tech orientated, but these but are things that there I'm, but supporting, it's there. The I'm supporting the network. I actually think I have two full nodes. I have one for the website. We have mm -hmm. one here. Uh, so, uh, so there's lots of things. I don't know guys, you don't need to know all this stuff to be successful in Bitcoin or put yourself on the Bitcoin. I mean, for, for most people, the easiest way is probably dollar cost averaging. If you're technically inclined and find it, find this fun thing to do. I would, I wouldn't discourage you from mining, but it's like another, per another person said in the chat, don't expect it to turn a super big profit if at all. Yeah, I mean, just look at the last peak, and we have that outline there. And, and what was it? They doubled on what four x about four x. Yeah, that done. But frankly, it surprised me that it paid off that quickly. It paid, the last peak is paid off more quickly than that previous peak. The yeah. previous peak that was a long bear market. <laughs> that was. And we were two thousand seventeen. That went from uh, uh, our two thousand and. 17, 14, 14 oh, yeah. all the way to 2017. So it was three year. We had a three year bear market. Right. And then a two year bear market. And, the and then, but if you accumulated during that, <laughs> that was just 
great, but that I don't think a- you understand the suffering and, and the mocking of people get. And people aren't going to listen to you if it's in a bear market. Right? They're, not, they're just not interested. And, you know, what gets people like, oh, it's going up. It's, it's that FOMO. It's that fear of missing out. And you know what? You, if you're not dollar cost averaging, you, I'd say you've already missed out. And the only way to get in is to start. Start now. Huh? It's a yeah. start now. Yeah. Start now. I mean, it's too bad you didn't start later, but. It's better than starting in a year. Yeah. So, all right. I think that'll do it for, for now. There's no more questions out here. So All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope this helped. Just don't get too caught up in the, this stuff. Uh, this is not see, anything see it new. See for what it is. Yeah, see it for what, and it is a wake-up call. I I, mean, I like it. I kind of think it, it's an opportunity for all you young guys to see the fundamentals. The fundamentals are it's. Uh, the fundamentals are inflation, and that's money creation out of nothing. It's the social security, uh, you know, social security, or better yet, just entitlement, pro- any entitlement program. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, I, as an article, I the, the churches, all of the Christian churches, Catholic churches, Muslim churches, uh, Jewish synagogues, they're all getting government handouts now for, for what, what they call compassionate, uh, uh, relief. Yeah. Compassionate, compassionate fascism. Basically, right, right. they partner, they partnered yeah, yeah. up with with the government to do. Well, this is what's right for people. Well, it's not right for for people. If you're taking from other people to do what you think is right, that's stealing. It just is. And so you need to understand entitlement programs are all theft. And the third thing is, if you think the regulators, I'm from the government, I'm here to help you, that's regulation. They're not going to help you. And regulation is nothing be a thorn in the side, you know, unless you're paying the lobbyists and you're part of the, the part of the elite and you're getting rewarded for it. And you're more and more of that's coming out. I mean, you already seen it. You got a president, you, you know, we, you know, how many billions has he extorted now from foreign guys? Come on guys. This, this is uh, wake up America. Just wake up. I don't know what else to say. So. All right. Yeah, thanks, thanks for, for tuning, tuning in. in. I, they wanted me to do this. I, I didn't think it was a big deal, but I guess everybody else thinks it's a big deal. So just keep your feet well planted on the ground. Remember the fundamentals of Bitcoin are not even Bitcoin. And we'll get through it. All right, guys. We'll see you. Bye.